but okay, again. Rook bishop c6. Check. Okay, but put the bishop somewhere on the diagonal where it's safe. Rook to b1. Okay. So rook e, there's king a6 on the move, but it's. Oh, oh he blunders his rook! Oh my god, Simon! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh no! Dude, that literally just threw out my back. And then there were only three matches remaining. Robert, you are here with me, whether you like it or not. That's how this speed chess championship thing works. And you and I, my friend, are getting set to preview the, uh, the next battle between these beautiful 16 faces. And uh, what do you expect to go down today as we talk about the, the, the matchup that's about to, to take place between... Zavin Andreasian and Vidit Gujarati. You know, Dan, I'm really excited today. Firstly, I've been a little bit feisty, so I got to apologize to you. Nobody else could hear our little beef behind the scenes, but um, in reality, this is going to be our, should be one of the more even matchups, I feel like, because uh, we don't really know too much about Vidit Gujarati's online skills. At least I don't. We know right. Zavin, he was the hero of the Pro Chess League. Yep. In fact, you know, what might not be known is that Vidit beat him in the Pro Chess League with the black pieces. Right. Uh, from what I can tell, uh, Zavin beat Vidit in the World Blitz Championship last year, and Vidit returned the favor by beating him in the Pro Chess League. So I'm kind of feeling like it's a bit of a toss-up. I think that Vidit is the slight favorite with the higher rating in classical chess, but um, you know, Zavin has proven himself to be a tough force in the server. Yeah, and you can tell people the, the truth. You, uh, I think you've looked at this in many ways as maybe one of the first times where the, the person that qualified, for those who are uh, maybe slightly unfamiliar with the format of the Speed Chess Championship, then uh, you wouldn't know that the main thing to remember is that of all of the players, all 16 of the faces you first saw, 14 of them were invited. And uh, two of them were qualifying spots. Zavin Andreasian taking one of them, if you look there at the right side of the graphic. And so... In, in this setting, it may be fair to say that uh, Zavin, with his experience, obviously he's the pro chess league hero, one of the more, more feared rapid and blitz players on our server, and being a little bit unsure of Gujarati's experience in this format, you might argue, right? Look at the FIDE blitz, right? So I think um, our smarter chess predictions still lean uh, Vidit's way that uh, maybe maybe as they should, but uh, but we'll see what happens, right? We're gonna we're gonna stay closely tuned. You can see those little heads there, everybody. If you're not a sub to the Chess.com Twitch channel, then you can't spam your favorite face. Um, but uh, there we have these uh, little Vidit and uh, and Zavin emotes here, and and you and I, regardless, are are ready to rock. Regardless of who wins here, we're always hoping for a close match because that's what we do. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I I, I think Vidit is the slight favorite, uh, despite. Uh, Zavin's experience online. I feel like when we've seen these matches go down and, and the best players in the world really bring a level of, call it focus, to this format where it's not just casual blitz for a few hours. Like, they really want to win these matches. We tend to see the stronger player win. And because of that, I think that it is the slightly stronger player and I expect him to win. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised either way. I also wouldn't be surprised if the matches were getting underway any moment here. I'm going to make sure that I'm following both players. And... Uh, and uh, I think we're, we're ready to rock. What about you? I'm definitely ready to rock. And Zavin Chess Mood. Uh, that's got to be... Um, that's got to be a new name for him, yeah. right? I'm not used to Zavin. I'm used to Zavin Andreasian. He, he changed it. I, his official handle was just his name, which is the one he used during the Pro Chess League. And by the way, Robert, before we go away from that, of course, I wouldn't come to a show like this not sporting the mug I've received from the reigning Pro Chess League championship team, Artok Manukin, which uh, for those of you who don't know, he's the manager of not only the Pro Chess League, the current Pro Chess League champions, but he's also the manager of uh, Zavin in many ways, and that's where Zavin is playing from right now. He's playing from the office of Artok Manukin in, uh, I believe, Yerevan, Armenia. So there you go. Fun fact. Yep. And we, we know and love our talk. They were amazing presence in the Pro Chess League. But uh, this ain't the Pro Chess League. This is a Speed Chess Championship. The time control is shorter. And Zavin has proven himself time and time again in the Title Tuesday events. And here with the white pieces, note that that knight was not on pre on the D4 square because That's if you right. took Queen 4, there was always Bishop B5 check. And in this opening, 
um, from the black side of things, you're stuck with this sort of bad bishop for the time being. White can play c3 and does right away, and that stops any knight b4, bishop b5, trying to trade off this bishop on d7. And essentially, we start in a Karakhan, and it looks like a French, because the bishop is stuck behind the pawn chain. That said, I think black has gained some very quick development. Um, if I'm white, I play queen e2, try to eventually play knight g5. Okay, Castle and Kings has surprised me a little bit because uh, I felt like the rook on the h file could be a bit useful for the time being, uh, but instead he castles right away. And if I'm black, I'm definitely thinking, how do I make progress in the king? Can I go bishop e7, h5, h4? Does that really work out for me, or is that just wishful thinking? Do I play f6 and challenge the center for black? Um, you know, is that one of the many options possible? And from White's perspective, now that we've cast on opposite sides, perhaps White should go for b4, a4, and a very quick assault on the queen side. That was a that was a whole lot of analysis. Pretty instructive for those wondering how to play this structure. Now, I have to point out that it was a Carol Khan, but we basically transposed into a French structure, which has both of you, both you and I, rolling over a little bit. We have our first speed chess sub there uh so uh thank you for that but i uh, want to give a shout out real quick to everybody joining us on twitch uh joining us on ch at chess.com tv thanks for being here remember that all your donations bits and cash included go directly to the prize fund for the players today starting with the base two thousand dollar fund from chess.com for this first round of matches uh and uh let's have some fun today so chess base here giving a shout out to robert and uh so what's going to happen now? I mean, I honestly have to say I like white structure just because of my bias toward toward the positional difficulties that you've highlighted with this bad bishop behind the chain. And here you see bishop before. Is he is he sort of calling Vidit's bluff on g5? What happens here if black just says, I'm going to kick the bishop and then go after the e5 pawn? Yeah, the problem with playing g5 too quickly is bishop returns to e3 with tempo. Yeah. Oh. He snags that pawn on b2 before I can make comment about it. But yeah. uh, then the f6 pawn is captured, and then g5 is undermined. Instead, he just goes for this pawn on b2, and Zavin welcomes this. He yeah. says, please keep taking my pawns, because if you do, you're going to continue opening files from my rook directly into your kingside. And don't be um, shocked if at some point there's some pawn takes f6, and if you look at the bishop covering that diagonal, I forget the name of the checkmate when you um, sort of set, you sacrifice your queen to blast open that diagonal. What is yep. the name? Oh, I'm just losing. Like, it's, if someone can f uh, remember that name for me, that would be great. Um, but I know it's named after a person. But anyway, the point is that with all these open lines in front of the Black King, you want to just uh, remove the pawns that are protecting it, even if it requires a sacrifice to get there. Uh, but it's looking very, very risky for Vidit. And I see a red uh, bar on his connection. So maybe his connection's not doing so great either. Mm -hmm. Looks like he's... Uh perhaps been disconnected somehow we'll try to give him some advice and that was it Bowden's mate is someone who just said that someone said that in the chat uh cleverton thank you cleverton for Bowden's mate that is what it's called <laughs> mayor grumpsy says hess's mate no i don't have looks a mate. like he's back now shaking his head a little bit um but uh back to four bars and reconnected and uh so that's good that's good. Zavin just comfortably taking, uh, waiting, right? Got the got the thinkers the thinkers pose on. Vidit finally makes a move, but looking at the time for only a minute with a, only a minute for Vidit, combined with the potential pressure he's about to deal with on the queen side, you're really liking the Armenians' chances to strike first here. Yeah, and I think this move order was better for Black than the alternative by playing queen a3, provoking the rook to b3, and now taking on a2. The queen can't move from d1 because the rook will be uh, directly under attack. So it's actually not so easy for white to figure out how to get another piece in the b file. You would love to play rook f1 to b1 right now to jump over the queen, but of course that's not a legal move. And so how do you get another piece into the attack? You can't just attack with one rook and, you know, let's say this bishop on f4 if it opens up. You can never really take on f6 because after e takes f6, g takes f6, then black plays for e5. And not only does that threaten to win a piece of e4, and most importantly, it shuts off the bishop from that very important diagonal. So uh, he played rook back to b1, and that doesn't threaten to win the queen because rook a1, queen b2, rook b1, the queen can zigzag out of there via a3. And so let's f try to find a useful move for black now. When you're under pressure, a move like, okay, queen a5 to get back to the defense, I thought a move like bishop c5 was also possible 
try to plant that bishop on the b6 square and blockade the b file. Mm -hmm. And will he play queen b6 now? I guess that's the question. The idea is, okay, I don't mind giving back a pawn. It feels like this is just going to be a game of tickle until this queen has to step on a landmine square, something that faces the bishop on the f4 diagonal. I mean, I'm looking at just queen a2, queen c2. Okay, he goes for queen a2. Which queen I think a5. Now will be met. Okay, goes back to b2. I'm, I'm looking for this queen to slowly inchworm her way to c2. Okay, he chooses e2. My idea, everyone, is to to make this queen make a tough decision. Obviously, c7, like we said, is sort of a an untouchable. Bishop a6. Bishop, Bishop a6. a6. Here immediate. it comes. Bowden's mate style. Let's open up both diagonals and uh, have a have a long night. Or maybe uh, rook b5. I think rook b5 was better because bishop a6, there was knight a5, which covered the b7 square and stopped the piece from going to b5. Now you just double the rooks by rook b1 here. Yeah. And I'm not sure how you stop this pressure. b6, I'm definitely considering taking on b6 and trying to get my bishop to a6 with check. That's looking very, very scary. But maybe it doesn't quite work out. And I don't see any other move. Okay, yep. knight a5 here was played. But I thought rook back to b2, threatening rook a2 was going to be pretty difficult but perhaps it doesn't you know after rook b2 and let's say i give you a second move in a row with rook a2 i have queen c5 protecting my knight still so um huh yeah well i mean it feels like white's about a move away from a knockout though um black comes back to b2 threatening rook a2 as you said if the queen comes oh. to a5 you might c5 you might even just play bishop e3 well i think instead of rook b2 there might be bishop c1 Hitting that queen off the a3 square. That was another uh, possibility there. But yeah. you're right. I mean, all these things are very thin. Bishop e3, queen c7, bishop takes a7. No, this is. This is this is what I was thinking he would go for. Just a very simple re retrieval of one of the pawns sacrificed, but it, mainly because it opens up new lines like this b6 square for white. So uh, let's see. This bishop can just move itself, and the rook a8 check is a devastating threat. Yeah. Uh, we've got to figure out the precise move order. So bishop d4, how could that be a bad move? Yeah, back of the bishop to d4. You're threatening rook to a8, which is about 99 problems. Um, I think I think this one is going to be over. And again, I'm not sure how much of the time pressure was induced by Vidit's faulty connection, but that's that's part of the game, part of the battle, even if you're uh, playing from across the globe, um, which is one well, of the fun game. things about the speech chess championship format. Yeah, is that people are playing from all everywhere. Well, this is game over now. Yeah, it's rook, mate. Rook eight, mate is threat. You can't stop the mate without giving up your rook on d for free. Yep. So that's uh, that's game. Mate and bake. Vidit is uh, just thinking about how he wants to resign. Does he want to click the left side of the button, the right side of the button? You get it. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Danny, it's interesting for um, some of these chess fans who are watching because Vidit, if you go on 2700chess.com, for example, you'll notice that he is indeed one of the rare players over 2700 feet in mm -hmm. classical chess but we remember when we did the commentary for hikaru's match against uh hoi fan yep hikaru said that people are going to underestimate zavin and in fact if we take this back even to the pro chess league hikaru was the one who predicted that it would be an 8-8 tie between shangdu and armenia and, and that the, zavin uh, would be the hero in the tiebreaker so no i mean you know, that's we we talked a lot about Hikaru's prediction skills sort of shocking us that day. It was like uh, it was like a, a premonition almost. Um, but yeah, I mean you're right. And so for anybody who's going to be shocked by Andreasian's play, especially in this format, they uh, they shouldn't be. So I agree with you. Absolutely not. And here with the black pieces, he goes for this Nidorf setup where um, you know White has the four on three majority on the queen side. Here, it's always something you want to look at first is, well, how many pieces do we each have? It's even yep. material. But pawn structure is uh, an essential point in high-level play. And you see that white has an A through D pawns. Black only has A, B, and D. And so white often would love to have this pawn on from B2 to B4. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for white, that costs a move, right? Because you'd have to move your knight away but, just But this is a good plan as well to, to, to start with the A pawn. You're threatening A5, maybe create another backward weakness on B7. Absolutely. Um, and... and you know, what Dan was to say is you really would want all your pawns going forward, right? You want yeah. A4, B4, C4, and then eventually try to push C5 and make a pass pawn yeah. with that majority. But with the knight on B3, it does save Black some time to uh, deal with his pawn. That's what happens when you break Russian schoolboy rules, putting a knight in front of your pawn. But no, it's actually funny, Robert, as someone who's played these positions for both sides, I actually really like Vidit's sort of heads-up approach here, everyone, if we switch over to the 
analysis because the uh, the main advantage of white castling short once black had already committed h5 is he didn't need to go for the more traditional castles long where we're going to be in a race of checkmate attacks. Instead, castling short makes a lot of sense because black has already made a positional weakness here, which makes f5 harder to play because of all the light square weaknesses, which means that white's positional majority over here is really going to be the biggest factor in the game. And there's a lot of famous games where white can can really grind it out on the queen side and, and use this space advantage. And black's only real counterplay is usually the E and the F pawn. But here, look, it's going to be really double-edged for black to ever get a lot of space on the king side because of this H5 pawn extension. So I really like this approach from Vidit to Castle Short. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in absolute agreement with you, Danny. And a very common theme for black is to play bishop G5. But unfortunately, in this position, it's not going to work out because... Well, this is what Vidit already started with, poking and prodding on the queen side. Yep. The b7 pawn is the target. If you played bishop g5, I take you on g5, and your knight on d7 is hanging at the end of that. Yep. And the real reason you tend to want to play bishop g5 is to free up access to the c5 square for your knight. Look at the pawn structure on the queen side. The pawn on a5 stops b4 from coming so easily, so knight on c5 would be great. The problem with playing knight c5 is that white will just snap that knight off the board with the bishop, and you'll be forced to take with the d-pawn, in which case white now has a pass pawn running free, not to mention the uh, vulnerable squares over there on the queen side as well. So if I'm black, I would play a move like rook to c8, and it was played right now. Uh, I even consider moving the other rook to c8, not that I want to push that rook there, uh, well, but I do like keeping well, my... One of the issues with this move, though, is I'm wondering, can white afford a trick like knight c4 at some point, hitting the weakness, and if you took, white would have had queen takes d7. I'm not sure that Vidit saw that. Um, oh, I really like that idea. I was actually thinking knight b3 for the same purpose, but knight b3, you always have b6, which yeah. is pretty safe. Because so knight the knight defense. Yeah, I think, I think knight c4 was a shot there that um, Vidit might wish he has back. And this is the right approach from Zavin, everyone. Not, not continuing with what seems like maybe, hey, I want to push these pawns on f5 and e5. If you ever push the f5 pawn, e4 becomes weak, and if you ever push the e pawn, likely you're just opening up more avenues to the light square. So driving this h pawn, and don't even be surprised if at some point black just throws caution to the wind and puts it on h3 to pry open things at the king. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And it's your pawn h5 was already vulnerable to begin with. Yep. And by putting it on h4, you actually put it on a protected square, which is you know another important thing in case uh, somehow it becomes uh, directly under threat. And now b6 was played. And the problem for white is you want to play b4, but you can't because with your c3 pawn under attack. Well, actually, I guess you can because the knight on d7 is is also hanging. So b4 can indeed be played at some point. Maybe b3 is a better move. And b3, the idea is to put your knight on c4 because once that knight gets to c4, you're going to start tying black's pieces down to the b6 pawn, to the d6 pawn. And f4, okay, that's a thematic uh, type of move. And h3 play it. So you, gotta, you don't want to allow... The, the capture, so you play it yourself. And now the g-file being open, does that favor white? I like it being open, but the bishop can always sit itself on f6 to defend everything. So yeah. bishop h4 makes sense. That, that will allow knight f3 with the tempo in the very near future. So rook e2 played it, yep. And now rook g2 makes a lot of sense. So does knight f3. Uh, pawn takes e5 is certainly not out of the question. You, Okay, rook g2. This is, I mean, that's the most logical move. And so, how do you continue here, Danny? I mean, do you play bishop f6? It looks a little too passive. I'm white's gonna play queen c6 at some point. Mm hmm. No, I, I, and white could even play knight c4 here, maybe just to hit b6 and um, overwhelm black's weaknesses. No, I, I think your move queen c6 made the most sense. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know where Zavin goes from here. This is a tough spot. If you move the knight to try to protect with the rook, then b6 falls. Trading and then putting the knight on c5 might be your best option, but I think even simple moves like knight c4 at the end of those lines are going to bring us to a uh, forky mode that we can't get rid of. Um, yep, yep. And, you know, with this, you can't trade queens. Or, well, you can, but all your pawns just get undermined. And remember, the white is up a pawn to begin with because black did play h4, h3, which did shatter the kingside pawn structure for white, um, but at the same time, a pawn is a pawn, and you know, rook g6 might come into the, the game at some point soon, because rook g6, the yeah. problem for black is the knight can't move from d7 without b6 falling. So, um, 
yeah, I don't know. Rook g6 is always an option here to start uh, poking and prodding at the pawns. Knight c4, I guess the idea is to meet knight c4 with rook c8, but then queen takes d6. Uh, the, the queen on b8 is not hanging, nor is the rook on e7. So, um, you know, that could be a saving tactic for black after knight c4, rook c8. But then again, you're distracting black's pieces away from the king side, where it looks like white is going to start mounting um, some... Yo. Some pressure. <coughs> Excuse me. But again, saving is sort of relative to the fact that it seems like black is going to be under a ton of pressure here for the rest of the game. Um, although I, I just have to say that I don't like the direction of the knight on f3 from the perspective that it felt like the knight coming to c4 was only a matter of time before d6 and b6 became the biggest issues. And now, now where's the where's the concrete follow-up plan? Yeah, that's the question. So he took on e5 because, again, if the knight takes on e5, the b6 pawn hangs. So you have to keep that knight on d7, or do you? If you play knight takes e5, yeah. then can you get away with queen takes b6? Because if you play knight takes e5 now, bishop takes e5, I'm worried about um, some discovery where bishop takes c3, where the e3 bishop is hanging. Or h2 c5. even, yeah. Um, yeah. But queen takes b6 protects that bishop, and now rook b7, he's going to take b2, and all of a sudden... White's king is not feeling the safest either. White can play queen takes a5, and if rook takes b2, you don't have to trade right away. Um, something like rook f to g1. But then here comes f4. Yeah, this is getting spicy. And yeah, this the, is exactly uh, what the Zavin needs to happen. Right? It's, um, you know, he, so he needs to get f4, f3 type of thing in. What else? You can't take really afford to take on b2 because after queen takes b2, not only is c3 hanging, but h2 is hanging with checkmate. So, yeah. Um, yeah, not an ideal position for for black. Although there's no immediate threat because rook g2, king g2, queen b2 check, I always blockade with rook f2 on the second right. knight. You're not mating so. yourself on h2 unless you're into that. So, <laughs> um, but f4 is the really scary and annoying threat, honestly. But it makes you want to play. Makes you want to play bishop d4. Almost at some point, if you could get rid of this bishop on e5, g7 becomes a problem. But uh, but how to do it? Vidit is letting his time advantage that he worked so hard to build up go away now because clearly he's allowed some counterplay he didn't want to allow. Yeah, this is... And bishop d4, I'm worried about rook takes g2, king g2, bishop takes d4, pawn takes d4, queen b2 check, picking up the d4 pawn at the end. And white will remain up one pawn, but the king is very unsafe. So he plays c4. So how does he intend to meet the move f4 now? And f4 played pretty quickly. As it should be. And so now I'm conflicted. Do I want to take on g2? Or do I want to play rook b1, pinning that bishop, and then allowing me to play f3 next? Um, both moves look very tempting if I'm black. I mean, rook takes... Uh, G2, king, G2, queen, B3, attacking the C4 pawn, threatening F3 check. That, I mean, that just, that move speaks for itself. I, but, okay, rook B3. Okay, he's, he really wants to play F3 above, above all else, clearly. And first he takes that H3 pawn to play F3 and now uh, attack the H2 square. But I really liked rook takes G2 followed by queen B3. I thought that would have been uh, more effective. So... <laughs> Sorry, laughing at a comment in the Twitch chat by Perpetual Stalemate. Zavin bears a striking resemblance to the YouTube personality, a god mature. So, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, well, now it really feels like Black has just completely turned this around. And not just from, okay, whether his attack is really that strong or not on the H file, the fact that Vidit is the one lower on time means a lot. Yeah, the clock situation is not good for Vidit, but... Is he going to be able to weasel his way out over the board? That A-pawn, okay, it's just a decoy. You want to distract Black's pieces over the A-pawn so you don't get mated. Now, you couldn't go H4 because Queen H3 checks, so it's any moves, but Queen H3 anyway, and this is... Look uh, out for protect. some kind of mate, some kind of sack-sack mate. You can't protect the square, and, well, Queen G6, this looks... Uh, looks like Black is really... Really getting close with some tactics here. Maybe just rook f6, and if check, put the king on h7. Ooh, all the oh. way back to g1. That just that just can't feel good. Nope. But what's he doing? Is he going to take on g6? No, it can't take on g6. That's a queen. queen. Yep. That's a lady. 
She's run out of options. Run out of time. And Black wins. Talk about a turnaround there. Wow. That's the kind of game that uh, really, really, you have a hard time letting go in this match because Vidit was in the driver's seat out of the opening and for the majority of that middle game. But, you know, I personally feel like he lost the thread when he moved away from the... Uh, from the king side, sorry, from the queen side pressure, not playing moves like knight c4 several times. Knight c4 was an option, and uh, and then lost his way because there was no real concrete way to improve on the king side there after knight f3. Yeah, no, it looked like white was making some progress there, but unfortunately, it was uh, not quite enough to you know fend off that attack, which became pretty vicious. And so Zavin showing some some quality chess thus far, and despite being um, the low-rated classical player, as mentioned, on this chess.com server, he has been a formidable force in many Title Tuesday events in the Pro Chess League in the qualifier for this event. So yep. no surprise to us that he has this lead thus far. But I, I you know, obviously don't count Vidit out. He's got plenty of time left here. This is only the first two games of the match. So um, Yeah, I agree. I think those calling for the, uh, the, tilt, the tilt in the chat are, are being a little bit too aggressive. But... Uh, yeah, we, we do see their heads are moving the opposite direction in our odds predictions with Vidit starting out um, a slight favorite. Now, uh, now uh, no longer the case there, but uh, we'll see if Zavin, Zavin can keep it up. I think Vidit needs to settle in a little bit. It feels like he's hasn't quite found his rhythm, and Zavin is like playing in his second home right now, given that he plays so much on chess.com. So. Yep. And in this game, well, it's a pretty calm setup. The bishop can retreat from c5 to f8 to defend the king side. And that's really what Zavin's going for with the white pieces. He's, you know, if you can tell pawn takes e4 eventually. It's like if knight f5 here, pawn e4, pawn e4, queen d3, which uh, trades the queens off the board, which is exactly why Zavin played queen f3 here. Because now pawn takes e4, pawn takes e4, queen d3. You can make a move like bishop e3, um, not giving a queen trade right away and um, sort of challenging black setup a bit more because now knight f5 is a, is a bigger threat. So here he goes. Take, 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 and a queen d3, I'll play bishop e3. And then knight e4, I guess, is possibility maybe? But then I'm worried about knight f5. These kind of things are, after I mean knight e4 is rook d1 first, it's, you know, your, your position is a bit scary from the black side of this um, with the knight coming into f5. Whenever I see that possibility, knight f5, uh, I think, do I have pieces? They're protecting my king. And what from black side, we have right now just a knight over there on the, on the king side. Of course, if the queens get traded, the point is all moot. It's uh, totally fine. But he takes on d3. I guess bishop e3, queen takes e4 was the real problem now that I uh, think about it. But now there's no attack to speak of. Sure, white can play knight g3 and protect the e4 pawn, but black is certainly no worse here. I, in fact, I prefer black's position because of the activity. So I think, um, yeah, it's, uh, things looking pretty solid for Vid in this one. That knight, where's it going? To c4? I thought it might go from g3 to f5, but again, there's no attack. So he's going to c4, where there's still no real attack. Because even if that knight's on c4, well, he went b5, so you never play knight c4. But the knight on c4 didn't attack a5. That was well defended. It wasn't attacking e5. That was also well defended. But it, at the very least, it was an improved square. So this b5 move makes perfect sense. And I'm not sure, I'm honestly not sure how white even continues here because right now it's a matter of putting your pieces on their best possible squares. And the bishop on c1, well, it needs to get out somewhere. Yeah, but, well, and now he's going to try to fix that. But that's not, a, you know, it's never good to have just played knight d2 and then retreat knight to f1. It's not something uh, you really like to play because... I think just rook e to d8 for starters will be uh, a tempting move. And, well, if that bishop has to sit on d2, it's a very passive square. If the bishop goes to e3, you always have to consider the problem with the e4 pawn hanging. So um, rook e d8 is one idea. b4 from black is another, trying to attack the c3 pawn and also behind it the b3 pawn. But then at b4, uh, bishop d2 might have been an improvement. So bishop b6 here, I think just sitting tight but is that going to allow some sort of tactical resource to complete development like bishop e3 could you get away with it 
Knight takes e4 immediately, fails to bishop, takes b6. But if you trade, white takes with the knight, maybe then black could gobble e4, and there's no effective discovery for the knight on e3. Possibly. Yeah. No. So he's just going to go with a simple development. Yeah, because bishop e3, bishop takes, knight takes, knight takes e4. It didn't look like a, a good transition for white. But here, bishop d2, I guess... You know, I underestimated how solid white's position is because optically black's position is better. You're more active. Your rook on d3 is, you know, is at least in white's camp. The bishop on b6 has a target on f2, whereas the yep. bishop on d3 is not doing anything. But that said, you know, where is the progress to be made? In rookie two, good move. Um, and what, you know, if I gave black three moves in a row, uh, knight d7 is a, a good answer to what I was about to say. How would black make progress? And this is the way to do so. Put that knight in c5. Say, how are you going to protect your b3 pawn? Because rook a3 is always met by pawn to b4. And, well, I don't see how else you protect it besides putting a knight on d2. But in order to put a knight on d2, you first have to make a move like bishop e3 or bishop e1. And bishop e1 is particularly sad. Ultra passive setup. Mm -hmm. Bishop e3 now is possible with e4 not hanging, but after bishop e3, um, maybe still knight c5 trying to transition into an endgame where black has a dark square bishop and a knight, and white has the two knights. So, Well, we'll see if this is a well that uh, Vidic goes back to. This is clearly the best position he's had of any of the three games so far, though he was much better in last game, too, that he uh, eventually misplayed under time pressure as white. But uh, you don't want to go down three games to start a match, right? Losing the first two should be should be enough to kind of wake you up. So this is a big, big moment, even the, even this early in the match for Vidit. Yep. And, yeah, you're absolutely correct. He needs to start gaining the momentum because, um, you know, of course he respects Zavin as a chess player, but now 96 for sure. Because 96 you can't play G3 because Rook takes G3 check with the bishop pinning the F2 pawn. And that knight coming to F4 is going to be pretty painful for uh, white. Look at just white's pieces. If you go knight D to F3, you know, to, to give your rook some space on the second rank, well, it's just so awkward. Your knight in H2 doesn't have anywhere yep. to go. So your knights are kind of going from, you know, F1, going to go back to F1 at some point. Not ideal. So here. They're, they're rotating, commuting between these four squares here, but n none of them really doing much to improve their the quality of living. Um, why is it knight F4 just screaming to be played here? Well, I like that decision first because you get your rook behind the pawns. So now rook b1 will keep that rook tied down to the b2 square. Yep. The knight on f3 is tied down to the e1 bishop. And the knight on h2 just isn't doing anything. So how, so maybe a4, knight a5, knight c4 is an idea for black. a4, knight a5, knight c4, yeah. Even even just bringing the knight back to c5 now is... Oh, yeah, you're right, yeah. yeah. That's... <laughs> you know, it's funny. I just was thinking, what the knight e6 looked good, right. but no, my, my knight on c6 hasn't done anything for a while. I was trying to get that in the game, but knight c5, of course, is way stronger. In fact, well, he, he played it before I could highlight it, but uh, yeah, I think that it is in position to strike back here. Um, Avage, I think it was a a big a big 33 says we need Ding Lee Ren in next year's SCC. Just for the record, Ding was invited and wanted to play, uh, but couldn't make it work with some of the stuff he has going on. But, uh, yeah, um, it's it's definitely an, a global affair when you play the it, when you watch the SEC because you've got people from India, we've had competitors from China, obviously commentators from the U.S., even even places such as New York. Who knew, right? What? Like Robert Hess. So. Oh, I think he missed a tactic. Wasn't Knight D4 winning just a move? I mean, this is also very good for Black. But I thought Knight D4, okay, this is phenomenal for Black. But Knight D4 instead of Knight takes B4, might have been a shot and the main to point, everyone, is that if the knight takes, black takes here with check in her mizzo before gobbling back on d4. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think knight d4 was better, though. Again, he should still be winning here. Yeah, this is looking pretty pretty unpleasant for white. Though it's, you know, the knockout blow isn't quite clear yet. And if, you know, if you take on g4, knight takes g4, h5, h6, okay, then we're starting to see something for you. Ah, I like this decision. Yeah. If normally... Yeah, two pieces are better than a rook, so taking here would not be ideal. But the problem is after rook f2, bishop f2, king f2, rook b1, I'm going to have two clear pass pawns on the queen side. Well, this is no better, really. Yeah, this is just a whole lot of pawns, and uh, these knights still have never not found good squares for the entire game. So be interested to see what happens if uh, Zavin again chooses to go in 
for this uh, E4 sort of Italian structure he did. And I'm going to guess that he tries something different because this has been a bad game for White from start to finish. And now here comes Rook G1 check. Should we call for a mate on G3? Is it too early to uh, to reference everyone's favorite spot over here on G3? <laughs> you know, I don't think so. Knight F5 is just played. And okay, oh, look at that. I highlighted it on the analysis before he went for it. Now he's just going to gobble up a million pawns. Knight takes H4 with check and then... I thought he, maybe he should have taken, but I guess after the king moved, he didn't like the H pawn. But uh, all right, there should be a million ways to skin this cat. Bishop D4. Yeah, just actually F5 look at this four. move F5 just to highlight how how bad this knight has been all game. Right, <laughs> <laughs> taking away the G4 square there was like the it was like the final nail in that knight's coffin. The knight is, is being is being squeezed and and dominated. Do you think three three extra pawns are enough for Vita to win this game? Um, four would be, I'd be ready to call it, but um, I'll, I'll say three is okay, too. Steve is five, calling for Zavin to make a comeback in this one, too. I, I don't think so, buddy. Not in the cards for this game here. It's funny, it's almost stalemate. You know, it's one of the, I was like yeah. looking at how, how many moves are left. Okay, the king of the H3 square. So uh, that's, that was a good win for Vidit. Very good. High quality chess by him with the black piece. Well, and honestly, it's a good sign if you're in the Vidit corner, whether you're rooting from India or somewhere else, because, uh, you know, in many ways, I think he should have had that second game, Robert. A similar sort of positional, you know, he outplayed Zavin in most of the game. Um, and so for him to strike back and win that, you, you start to feel the momentum coming, right? And uh, that's, that's what you need. And it, of course, it is all just psychological because he did lose that game. But when you're convincing yourself to be in the best positive state of mind, it's important to focus on those little wins, right? So now he could be telling himself, you know, I was doing very well that second game, should have won. I've won this game. I feel like I'm finding my feet a little bit. Absolutely. And, and it's, you know, sometimes it's all it takes is um, to get a win, even if it's not a good win. That was a particularly good win. But sometimes just get, getting on the scoreboard is what it takes to um, start your, your comeback. And, okay, it's two to one. It's not like yeah. much of a comeback is needed. But for Vidit, you know, those two tough games where uh, Zavin really proved himself. He's like, I'm, I'm worthy of being here. And now it's a matter of Vidit proving his class, saying I'm a 2,700-plus player, uh, one of the top players in the world, and uh, I can handle, you know, maybe pressure he's feeling his first time in the speech chess championship. And speaking of getting on the scoreboard, all of our fans can do that. We keep talking about how this is a global affair whenever you have the Speech Chess Championship going. Players from India and Armenia today, commentators from the U.S., and if, you're, if you speak another language, we are also broadcasting this in Portuguese, Russian, French, uh, just Spanish. Um, but we got a one-year diamond membership on the line for all those who want to Photoshop themselves or whatever the craziest place would ever be to watch a Speech Chess Championship match. We see the Chess.com official account getting the party started. Going to be hard to beat astronauts watching Speed Chess in space, but uh, if you're if you're in the market for a for a one year diamond membership, play play along in our Photoshop contest. You have to tweet with the hashtag Speed Chess in order to register. So, all right, Robert, where are we at now with uh, Vidit back back on the white side of things? Yeah, Vidit, similar to what he did in the game two games ago when he had the white pieces, gaining space and it's de very different opening. Um, you know, instead of the knight orf, it's uh, what's the name of this opening? Like the oh, it says up top the canal attack. I never knew it with that name. I just know the bishop b5 check Sicilian. But the point being is that he has slightly more space and room to operate with. His pawn on e5, of course, is blocking that bishop on g7, and it's very well defended with knight on f3, bishop on g3. The knight on d5 looks very good, but it has nowhere really to go to, and it's sort of just sitting there. The knight c4 is an idea for white, followed by pawn to a5. Um, and coming up with moves is not always easy for black here. I would think a move like queen to c7 would want to be played, but then e6 comes. Uh, queen d7 is certainly a move that's worth our attention. And the idea is to play a rook on d8. And he starts with rook c8 here. And, well, what's his idea after knight c4? Is he trying to go b5 to gain some space in return? I don't like that decision, I don't think, but uh, maybe it's worth it. Just knight c4, b5, then follow that up with uh, some progress on the queen side. But after b5, a takes b5, a takes b5, I think knight a3, just making sure that black is not in time to play c4 um, looks like a good idea. So, um, yes, yeah, so b5 indeed was played. So 
So he should actually maybe he can leave the pawn on b5 as well. I wonder if that's a worthy option. Saying knight a3, your pawn a6 might become weak in some yep. variation. But no, this makes more sense. So knight a a takes knight a3, and after b4, he'll play knight to b5, protecting the c3 square, um, just putting his knight further into black's camp. So knight d2 is played instead. So what's the idea for c4? I think he might be headed for either the e4 or b3 square to try to undermine c5, but I agree with you that knight a3 seemed... I, I actually personally liked your, your suggestion of playing knight a3 before taking on b5 just from a... You know, from a thematic, the way you try to take advantage of your opponent overextending their pawns on a side of the board is is to leave that base pawn weak. And I actually think the tension on b5 would have led to more problems for black at some point. But, okay, so now, now not only has he not played that line, but I agree with you. He seems to be losing the threat a little bit. But I guess c5 is weak, and that's kind of where this knight is headed, to either b3 or e4 and, and poking at the c5 pawn. Well, knight b3, there's always queen d1, rook d1, bishop c2. Um, Got to keep an eye out for that tactic. So perhaps knight b3 now is not the right time. And black is going to play knight to e6, right? That way I can protect the c5 square. I can also yep. play knight on d4. And if that knight gets to d4, it's very clear that black is the one gaining the momentum. So uh, the e5 pawn in some end, end games is overextended. And what I mean by that is if you look at that e5 pawn, uh, it's attacked twice right now. Protected three times, but a pawn's best friend is another pawn, right? Mm -hmm. that pawn went from f2 to f4, and that bishop could go to the other diagonal. Like let's let's switch, put the pawn f4 and put the bishop on the f2 square. That's a favorable transition for white. Here, on the other hand, black played a good move h5, stopping yeah. four. But I was going to say that this pawn going to f4 is very difficult because you have to play knight h4 as he just did, and then once the bishop moves, then you play f4. But you're wasting some time in the in the process um, to get this. To happen so move like bishop d7 or bishop to e6 i don't I, I think bishop d7 makes more sense with the knight coming to d4 but maybe bishop d7 is met by knight to b3 in a timely manner I don't... yeah now there's no longer tactics here on c2 so we can go back to this idea but i mean i, I agree with you and i think well the other issue with pushing the f pawn as you said you want pawns together that would be the e5 pawn's best friend but it significantly weakens the dark squares and so there's this, this is a weird a weird structure where both sides could be, be potentially making more weaknesses for themselves if they try to grab space. But as black remaneuvers and the d4 square becomes more of the focus, I think the more you have to light black. Yeah, the bishop on f1. If that bishop were on the d5 square, I could talk about how white's you know doing well. That's why this pawn on c4, that move is very committal. By playing c3 to c4 by white, you lose access to good squares for your bishop. Yeah. Um, um, and then now he went g4. Well, okay, the bishop will come to g2, but you're never kicking um, the piece from the d4 square. So, um, I don't know. The d4 square is prime for the taking. There it goes. And with the knight on e6 following, you know, in protecting it, it's hard to kick these pieces out. I would play maybe king g2. Yep, there's king g2. You have to, yeah. Is rook a8 is meant by rook takes a8, rook takes a8, knight takes c5. And then the knight takes c5 undermines that knight on d4 yep. and temporarily wins a pawn that still might be very, you know, fine for black because the b2 pawn is also a weakness. I'm really liking black's position, I guess. No, I agree. And I think that tactic is, okay, it's it's nice to, to highlight that knight takes would undermine the knight, but it's really a, even more of a testament to black's position that, that white is having to save by, by some sort of tactical resources because positionally, White is just in big trouble here. You highlighted and foreshadowed pretty well. I thought you were kind of full of it when you said that the e5 pawn might become a weakness in the end game. But look at you, look at you having uh, having an eye on the on the prize of the future here. And now we can really see what Robert highlighted that the e5 pawn is overextended, all the dark squares are weak, and and black is in control. So not that I don't believe in you, partner. I just thought maybe you were over exaggerating a little bit. So <laughs> you know, I, sometimes I say say somewhat smart things right and, you know i see smarter chess in the twitch chat so i guess it's improving and making my chest it's, it's contagious yeah yeah um and, no but with a minute extra on the clock as well uh well i guess only 40 seconds now you, you have to like black here he just directly attacks the e5 final okay that's a nice move though instantly playing rook d5 uh vidit is getting counterplay 
on c5. The rook on the seventh rank hits e7. Yeah, it's very annoying for black because you can never go rook b8. Always a c5 pawn is a yep. weakness. And knight d4. Okay, what's let, let me ask. What's black's next move? If I gave you a free yep. move, where are you going? I, I don't know. I think that's why rook d5 was played so instantly by Vidit because as soon as he was given that chance to, to put pressure here, it became really hard. It's becoming harder to see how black maneuvers himself to either expose the e5 pawn that you said was weak or, or take advantage of anything else because c5 and the seventh rank are a problem. And there's still no threat because you don't want to take on d5. Yeah, this would be the last thing you'd want to do. So still no threat. I really want to play bishop e2 to d1 to a4. But if I go bishop e2, I know you're going to take my bishop. Ooh. So a check for what? Checks are for potters. Checks are for kids. Silly I would play rabbit. bishop d3 here. I play bishop yeah, I d3. love bishop d3. I also still like bishop e2, as you said, because I don't really, I'm not really worried about you trading your knight on d4. Okay, he goes with, with bishop d3, which stops knight c2, so that the threat of king e3 may be on the table again. And I really want to play knight g3 actually, and then move my bishop to e4. And the reason why knight g3 works is because once you take on d5, I take with my pawn. You're, you can't take on e5 with your knight on e6 hanging. So, for example, king e8, knight g3, rook d5, pawn takes d5. Now, all of a sudden, black's in huge trouble with knight to h5 coming and things like that. So This uh, is sort of the opposite of games we saw earlier where Vidit was in control and was slowly lost the threat under time pressure. Here, we've liked black for a long time, but uh, Zabin has been shuffling his knights rather than doing anything useful for the last several minutes. Yeah, I didn't like to move king e3. I thought that was the time to play bishop c2. Because if your bishop gets to a4, black is in some big, big trouble. Okay, this is also looking... Yeah, he has another there. idea for that bishop. He wants to come into f5. Yep, come to f5 or just go to e4. One of those squares is going to do the trick. So, uh, I really like f5 because in, in some variation like this, everyone, the, the knight is never really going to be happy to trade there and just you know bring this massive pawn mass into the center. That's a lot of use of the word massive, but it is massive. So... Um, Okay, knight f4, you're ready to allow... Ooh, I thought king bishop e4. H6. Yeah, he missed Watch bishop out. h6 because of knight e6 now. Yep. I thought he should have played king e4. He should have. He should have ignored the pawn, but sometimes we get tempted, and when you know it, we get tempted, we just do things. But, okay, let's see. How can... I mean, still, white is not looking too badly over here. Yeah, but time pressure. We get to see our first, uh, our first test of whether Vidit has the time scramble skills to keep up with Zavin. Are you trying to ask if he's vitted to win it? If he's vitted to win it? I, well, I know he's vitted to win it. And I loved your oh, you know, your slightly deep drop there of how temptation you just do things. But we'll get into that later and talk about your behavior. Knight d2. Um, go knight d2 to Knight d2, knight, knight e4 was better, I agree. But you still have knight, knight a5, knight c6 coming. Why not go for it? Rook knight g2. a5, knight c6. Oh, wait, rook h3 check. He has to go rook g3 as knight on b3 is hanging. I don't think he saw knight a5, knight to c6. It's still on the table. Three. No, this is still good for white. It should, should just be crushing like for white, honestly. But rook a8 or rook h8, doesn't matter. Yeah, you, you got it? You could take c5. Yeah. I still believe knight a5, knight c6 might have been better, but the rook ending is, is better for white anyway. I don't love this decision, though, because now it's easier for black to play. Yeah. All right, the king comes to d4 just in time. Pro no, this is the wrong approach. You're going to allow him Wait. to trade the b for the c pawn. You needed to get that king closer. So king d4, but, but king, the king rook d4 can go now. back. Yeah, rook d1 check is. Uh, I like rook d1 check. You got to keep that king away. C6, b2, c7. Yeah, he's not getting. It's it. going to be a draw. But I didn't like the move c6 there. I thought I guess it doesn't matter because your b2 was the threat. But highlighting uh, highlighting the moment that I was talking about, there was there was there was this constant idea of bringing the knight from a5 into c6, and I think that that was where where white could have kept black completely tied down to e7 and sort of slowly worked the king in. So it definitely feels like a game that Vidit let his opponent off the hook. Yeah, the knight d2 to e4 to g5 was just a nice check. You know, great square. The knight on e4 stops anything from coming to g3. You're threatening to go to either g5 or to d6 in that position. I mean, that was a very good uh, maneuver for the knight. Now Vidit, so you're maneuvering. Look at this queen on b8. So the reason it comes to the queen side is that just in case white has any funny ideas of taking on c6, which gives black the two bishops, you stop the pawn from going to d4. You have good coverage in that square because d4, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes d4. And, okay, now these knight h4 ideas are not so scary. My bishop on e6 covers the f5 square. And, um, okay, you'll go knight g3 and bring your knight to f5, which is why king h7 was played, so that black can play g6 uh, if this knight comes to g3. So, um, 
Yep. Let's see. The queen f3 is a good move. I guess the problem for black is you don't have a clear target because you want to play rook b8 to get on the semi-open file to put pressure on b2, but that bishop's not leaving the c1 square anytime soon. Yeah, it's already Maybe. fully developed on that square in this type of structure, everyone, because all it needs to do to help the kingside counterplay is stay put. Right. And that's actually a really great way of phrasing it because I know a lot of um, less fewer people who are not as experienced, they think that, oh, my bishop needs to get out. Yep. And, um, well, your bishop doesn't because as you just point out in very wisely is that the bishop actually is in the attack simply by being on that diagonal yep and if you're white do you play g4 here because g4 says i can put my knight on g3 behind the pawn instead of in front of it and then even push to g5 speaking of that bishop on c1 g4 g5 that bishop can always capture on g5 and help launch an attack so um, g4 is the move i would certainly play here I, i'm not entirely sure what is being considered besides g4 i mean, guess knight yep. g3 right away but g4 seems to sort of play itself there it goes yeah i'm surprised he took so long to play it honestly maybe trying to calculate where he's going next and make the next several moves faster shout out to unc the awesome steve is five thinks that vidit is actually the favorite in bullet i'm not sure i agree with that but i know we're we're gonna find out anyway so thank you to everyone who's here this is the speed chess championship there are two more matches in the first round of play. Next week, we have back-to-back -back affairs. On the 6th, we have Duda versus Karyakin, and then we have Giri versus Mamad Yarov. So um, pretty excited for this last week here before we, we get all the pairings set for round two. All right, here comes the attack as you called for, Robert. Yeah, G4. G4. It was played. I love it. G4. Sorry, I can't not scream G4. <laughs> That's a very good move. And look at the light squares now. And when I say it, it, it's to people watching, it may be like, well, the light square is only black has a light square bishop, but look at the light squares around the king, g6, h5, f5. All of those are for you know, whites for the taking. Now, black can play the move g6 himself, and then it should consider it. And the reason why g6 is possible is the knight on g8 covers the h6 square, so there's no problem there. I mean, the king is already protecting it. Mm -hmm. And there's not a way for white to get a second piece attacking in the g6 square. Um, and that looks like a certain possibility, but what does g6 really accomplish on the other hand? You're not going to get to play f5. Look how many pieces of whites protect that square. Two pawns, two knights, and a queen. And so it's, you know, it might not be, okay, he played it. See, I was, I was weighing the pros and cons. Oh, I think he, I think he decided it was worth the risk, but, uh, whenever that, that, that's sort of how attacks work at a high level, right? You, you've got pressure on certain points. They have to adjust and react, and now in order to, to guard those, clearly other things have been weakened, like h6 and f6. And so um, now black can is going to have to hurry to defend those, and white's going to try to remaneuver to, to change where, where he's attacking. Yep. What and to it, do now? Maybe just back up the knight and then drive h5, h, h4, h5? The problem is once you do that, then black will just play g5. Right. And we've seen Magnus play many positions like this recently yep. where you just put your knight on e7 and be prepared to take on f5 when it happens. So, um, yeah, remains to, to be seen whether or not white will be able to crash through because right now it's not really looking... And he does bishop e3 near the rook on e2. b2 is well defended. And Okay, so how many pieces are hitting the f5 score for black? g6, bishop e6, that's two, and the two rooks. So he's almost in time. And he might just play knight e7 and pawn f5, which is pretty crazy to think about. Uh, but he looks like he'll be just in time to be able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're white, do you play a move? Oh, you can't play rook d1 because a2 is hanging. Yeah, that's, that's a really irritating issue over here now. And if you take the time to play a3, you're losing critical tempi and, and maybe making the b2 pawn weak for the rest of the game. Yeah, I'd be very worried about that. And, um, you know, black would love to shift gears to the queen side and throw these yep. rooks from the f file to the b file. But then, as we keep talking about, the black king side is quite yep. uh, weak. Oh, my gosh. What just happened here? We just had a, uh, a, gift, a gift spam by the one and only chess bay making sure that everyone has emotes that they need for the show today <laughs> i hope you enjoy the lightning crashing down in between vidit and uh zavin here because hopefully we have lightning on the board for the rest of the day thank you chess bay you're amazing chess bay is awesome look at it um, well that's uh the, we have fireworks on the board as lightning crashes 
on the uh, on the screen, the knight comes to f5 and says he doesn't care about losing itself for the pawn. I like it, honestly. Yeah, I love yeah. it actually. I mean, here comes the G file, and uh, can can somebody can somebody call for some action here? I'm gonna play it like Lionel Richie on the G file. Um, <laughs> You, <laughs> that was funny. I, I like that one, Danny. And then, the, you know, when you're up material, you often think, how do I sacrifice back? But there's no right. way to do so because if you go rook g5. Rook g5, I, I think he will play. But one of the only issues for white is that the queen is spying e3. So full board, ooh, oh, full board wait, awareness. What? I was just highlighting you need to be aware of it. And I think Zavin forgot. So Unless rook g1 queen, is just winning. Well, queen e3, rook g1, queen g5, queen f3. There's queen d2 check, rook g, yeah, that does not look good for black. But the problem is for white, anytime you put the queen back to g3 square, the queen can come back to g5. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah. queen, e, queen e3, rook g1, queen g5, queen moves, say, oh, does queen e2 trap my queen? No, I have queen h4. Yeah, you also so, have queen, well, no, you have queen d2, rook g2, queen e1. And just so everyone knows, the threat right now is knight takes f6 check. So let's play a random yeah. move for black. To show that knight, knight takes f six check would remove the defender of the g seven square. That would be mate. That's the and idea. If, and if the king moved to h eight, the queen g eight is checkmate, where you force that king right. into the corner. You're, you're right. That is definitely a worthy tactic to show. Knight takes f six. If rook takes, we have mate on g seven. If king goes to h eight, we find a different g spot and deliver the goods. There we go. <laughs> um, and, and now rook g four doesn't work for white. Well, there's queen e one, but I think queen takes h five. Might even, yeah, check. I think you would Sorry. happily sacrifice your queen to get all these pieces off the board. Absolutely. There's no attack anymore. In fact, black is the one with more pieces in that scenario. So um, you need to find No, I mean, move. the more we look at it, I, I, I didn't realize we were calling it, but when I was highlighting that E3 was hanging and you needed to keep an eye, I think Zavin, I, I'm guessing he just straight up missed this because I don't see any reason not to take with the king and then slowly build up the pressure on the G file because black's pieces were essentially frozen to what was coming and so this is really um yeah i, I like vidit's chances here big time and I, I think that he did miss the e3 pawn yeah and i think that in that other line of king g2 black would run king g8 king f8 and run the king oh the that's king. a that's a nice point i'm going to show that yeah if, if the king had taken instead black would have recognized it was time to get out of dodge i still think that might have been the right choice um but but I hear you. Yeah, maybe this attack, as much as we like knight f5, wasn't as straightforward as it looked at first. Yep. And here, Danny, the only chance that white has is to, if that a pawn was removed, then white has a chance for a pass pawn on the queen side. So yeah. uh, right now, the f6 pawn needs to be tended to. So it goes rook g5. I do like that move. The point is that pawn d5, pawn d5, a4 is protected by the bishop on d7. So queen f2, a very good response saying my queen's coming to a7, where not only does attack a4, attack c7, and black's king is still in the iffy spot. I don't think yep. that black is worse by any means, but I'm not so certain that black is yep. uh, too better here. Knight c8, queen c5 comes, and yep. now pawn takes d5 is the threat. And well, this is a great move, and you highlighted a great point, that this is how the queen outplays the pieces, and we see Vidit trying to put a stop to queen a7, but whenever you have a situation like this, if you are the one with the queen versus the pieces, you have to look for ways for her to start quickly threatening things where she can flip from one side of the board to the other, poking at weaknesses on both sides, because that 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 type of approach is the only thing that keeps the pieces off balance and prevents them from coordinating where they will definitely outplay the queen. So so this was a nice idea, but I actually think Vidit came up with the remedy. Knight c8, knight d6 is really strong because it, it slowed down queen a7 and e4 is is eventually going to be a problem. Yeah, I would start, you know, he wants to play essentially c5 and take that e4 pawn. I would start with the rook g7, a very defense. There it is. And the reason how c5 happens and you're having yep. trouble protecting e4 because the bishop and, and the rook pounds. is also so useful here. It guards c7 so that knight takes e4 as possible. And with bishop time. C6. Bishop c6. Okay, Keeps bishop c7 c6 defense. is the patient approach, but it may not be needed. I think knight e4, bishop takes f5, both pawns fall, and then there's threats like rook g3. I don't oh, know. that's that's true too. I'm meeting you. I'm trying to yeah. go bishop c6, bishop b4, rook g2. Oh, you're right. No, I, I think we're I think we're picking between, we're flavor flaving this right now. We're picking <laughs> between flavor flaves. So he goes with my flavor. Look at that. He apparently he likes uh, he likes strawberry lemonade. That's one of my favorite flavors. FYI. So knight d2 here, and threatening knight f3, rook g1 mate. Oh, yeah. it's dirty. Well, we highlighted a certain action on a certain spot on G8, and I think we're going to see a similar type of mating net on a different G-file spot here. Uh, yep. 
It's this is this is delicious. Zavin sits back. He knows he's going to resign, and we have a tied match, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. That was a big. That was an exciting game. I don't know why my my juices are flowing. Suddenly, I'm I'm excited that I'm not on camera. <laughs> yeah, this has uh, really been a, a good match so far. I mean, honestly, yep. the back and forth. Zavin played very very well those first two games, and Vidit since then has played extremely well to even up the match. And so both players showing um, their prowess in different positions. I think that Vidit, the slow builds, has worked very well for him. And I think he needs to continue that. We saw um, that game with the black pieces where he put his rook on d3 and slowly outmaneuvered Zavin. And then in his last game, of course, he just uh, had the two bishops, played g6. But everything went slow but steady. Yep. And he was able to overcome him. So very, very good play by Vid. And this is the good thing about the speech as championship. I saw earlier in the chat, people are like, oh, I don't really know these players. Well, right. now you're getting to see how strong. Yep. You know, they may not be the pl players you see in the Sinkfield Cup and the Grand Chess Tour and terms like that, but that doesn't mean that these players can't really play. Well, I mean, there's a lot of good chess players on the planet, right? I mean, not me or you, but others. Um, wow. Just kidding. You know, you didn't have to call us both out. I'm, I'm more upset for you than I'll, for me. I'll throw myself under the bus here next time. You're right. Uh, no, you're right. And these guys are these guys are stars um, in 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 not only in their own countries, but it shows you that uh, there's there's just a lot of good chess players on the planet. So, um, in the Pro Chess League, they are. In fact, we should mention that the Pro Chess League All Star Game, Robert, on September 8th, so a week from Saturday, these two guys will be teammates playing yep. for the Eastern Division. Uh, Vidit played for the Mumbai Movers in the in the Pro Chess League, and obviously many people know that Zavin was sort of the hero of Armenia taking taking the ultimate twenty thousand dollar prize. So, um, but these two guys will be on the same team. I'm excited for that. I am as well. I mean, it's really they had great performances throughout the year, uh, particularly Zavin, as we keep noting. But um, you know, they first go from competitors then to teammates. So it'll be uh, certainly a fun match, and I just tuned into the position here and I saw yep. that the pawn on b7 and the pawn on d5 are both under attack and the d5 pawn really worries me because the knight on e4 if that loses this protection well uh, you're just going to lose a piece so how do you protect if you're at e6 I feel like I just take on b7 you're not trapping me well actually e6 queen b7 rook b8 queen a6 only move the knight b4 and the queen back to e2 covering the C2 square where the knight was trying to infiltrate. So, yeah, not looking good for black here in my estimation. I think that um, Vidic clearly has chosen an opening that is causing Zavin some difficulty, and already it's a tough choice. We're in a tough moment. Yeah, uh, and he had to think about it and ultimately play a move like bishop c8. That's not where ninjas want to be. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bishops... <laughs> I mean, the bishop does have, uh, you know, similar to last game, it has this long diagonal on c8 to h3, but not quite the same because I don't think black's counterplay on the king side will be nearly what white's was in the last game. I do like that move, though, because it keeps everything defended. And I also feel like it's an admission. And yeah. oftentimes chess players, we're playing an objective game. Right? There's no subjective, objective chess. Chess is just objective. You have to find the proper evaluation. But when you're willing to admit that your position may not be so good and you need to retreat your bishop to its starting square, that's a sign of a very, very strong player. So I, I'm, I'm actually you know, impressed with that move bishop to c8. Not that I'm shocked that a strong player like Zavin found it, but it, it's very difficult when you're the one playing over the board to play a move like bishop c8. So I think black position is not that terrible. Well, rook takes c6 is a threat, so watch out for that. So when bishop f5. And, well, I mean, it's not looking so awful. You know, the, the problem for black is really the, the pieces. You need to play bishop e4 and uh, get rid of your light square bishop because you want to play e6, but with your bishop on f5, g4 will threaten to trap it. Um, and the reason bishop e4, I'm advocating for that move, is because the d4 pawn is the real target here. And white will want to, this is why bishop d3 is nice, realizing mm -hmm. that my bishop on f1 is not doing much, I would have considered bishop b5 instead of bishop d3 as well. But um, trading off those bishops, now white has more space, and this is very thematic for the structure. White can just take uh, his time, and where's black's counterplay coming from? Okay, you can go rook c8. I'm not scared of that. I can always double the c-file if I need to. Um, but I can also try to go for a slower buildup where I um, 
Well, rook c2 now by white might be the move. Rook c2. I, I was going to say instead of rook c2, one, one of the issues with this type of structure for black is that, okay, he goes for rook c2, but you have this sort of French structure where you would want to have pressure against like the d4 pawn if you're black, but you really lack that firepower. And white has ideas as slow as it seems, like queen e3, queen f4, queen g4, and then eventually punching a move like h5 through where g5 might even be met by a, with a sacrifice. And so I call this sort of an inchworm approach to the attack that's really only possible because the structure is so completely closed and because black lacks counterplay on the queen side, black lacks pressure against d4. So um, I, I may, perhaps a bad game I lost one time left me with nightmares that I'll never forget just how much I felt strangled in a structure like this as black and how white could just slowly build up anything that he or she wants on the king side. It actually forces black to eventually try to play a move like f6 and change the structure, but as we know, whenever you go against a pawn chain, if it opens up, the e pawn's going to become weak, the g pawn's going to become weak. So um, I, I love white's position here. Yeah, and I hate to quote Ben Feingold, but never play f6 in a structure like this. Yep. Your, uh, pawn, you get into it. But again, action. I don't even know why a3 is necessary. I mean, how do you stop my plan of queen e3, queen f4, queen g4 and then pushing h5 it's just so straightforward and, and black is black is starving for real play this knight can't come to a5 okay i guess the one idea you have is the knight can go to e7 into f5 which um makes me want to play a move like pawn g4 to stop that and then go for h5 but i still just think white is in complete control of where this one goes yeah and i'm also wondering if you want to go knight h2 to g4 that way you attack h6 throw in yep. the f6 square um maybe so knight h2, knight e7, I'll go bishop b4. And that's a very important move because white is certainly not afraid to take this knight and get good knight versus questionable bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, and so knight e7 for sure would be meant by bishop b4. That's why I like knight h2. Is actually you're playing with, you're, you're playing in the rhythm of the position. By playing g3, king g2, okay, now what? You're playing, you know, it's not bad. By no well, means. It's pointing bad. out that white is in control of, of the direction. But you're right, maybe... He should have been more aggressive because now bishop e4 will just be met by knight f5 since there's no longer the pinny mode on the rook. Um, but you mentioned the rhythm, and as Gloria Stefan said, the rhythm is going to get you. So <laughs> at some point, white will probably find his way back to, uh, to pressure on the king side here. I think, okay... I'm just not a huge fan of Vidit's lack of aggression on the king side when it felt to me that there was so many more opportunities to go for an attack, and we know... I love mating above all other things, but, you know. That's why you have four kids. You know what? Hey, hashtag boom. <laughs> um, you know, you know, Denny, I, I, I'm both agreeing with you because, you know, I was also voicing that opinion as well. But I also feel like this approach has been working for Vidit because Zavin himself is quite a tactical player. Right. And so I think that this um, methodology from Vidit's point of view is, well, I'm getting this build up. I'm slowly improving my pieces. And that will be enough to uh, lend itself to a victory. And so if, if I'm white here, okay, b4 for sure. Yeah. But I was saying knight d2, knight b3. But, but he's going to, you're right. No, I mean, it, 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 to each his own, right? What works for Vidit may be a slightly different approach. And I, 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 the issue I have is also the clock, though, because I feel like the moves toward the king side were more natural and intuitive. How much time did he spend on g3, a3? And I can tell you, he took 58 seconds on a3, 33 seconds on g3. It just seemed to me like that moment was not playing the most natural intuitive moves, and, and, I'm, and I'm worried that comes back to bite white here. Yeah, I, the time usage is a bit of concern, but I just love white's position because now you can even consider a4, b5. You can play knight d2 to b3. That's what definitely what I would look for. And what is black yep. doing? I think black can do. Because if you ever play b5 yourself from black, well, once my knight lands on c5, it's clear that you're going to have some difficulties. And black really needs to get this knight from c6 into c4 or some equivalent, but there's no way to do so. Um, so what's knight h2? Where's that knight going? The g4? Okay, there is a tactic that I'm sort of spotting. Let's just play, I'm just wasting a move. Okay, rook c7, knight g4, rook c8, queen e3. Now you can't play king h7 because queen takes h6 check comes into play. Mm. With knight f6 check. Dirty girl. Uh, uh, but now he provoked h5, which... Hmm. How do I feel about this? Oh, I think... He might have also been intending to play h5 himself as white to go knight to g4 to let his knight stay there forever. Um, that, was, that was definitely another option. So here, bishop d6, 
97, of course, is a good move. I really think that the best has sort of passed white in this game. It's not that white is not better. White is better here, but um, black is clearly gaining. <coughs> so yeah, I agree. And I'm Brooks. not trying to say I told you so, but uh, I felt that way. Because as much as this was a grind for white, I mean, there's there's been a lack of a, of a, of a knockout for some time based on this more positional approach. And now black is, uh, is trading down, which I think helped. I mean, ultimately... The space advantage could turn into problems if this dark square bishop finds freedom and eventually targets targets things like uh, d4 and e5. And that was a really nice move by Zava knight c4 because queen takes a6 was going to be met by queen c6 winning a piece. And he blundered. 93 check. Oh, just wins the queen. Boom. Wow. I was wow. accidentally throwing in an instant replay there with the moves going back and forth, 94, 93, because I was intending to back up to show the nice tactic of why queen takes a6 didn't work, but uh, other tactical problem. But, okay, I mean, we, 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 we kind of said that the writing was on the wall there, right? Vidit blundered because of time pressure. He got under time pressure because he took 58 seconds on a3 and 33 seconds on g3 in a position where white was almost a full point better as far as evaluation goes, right? And and again, it's easier for us to say, but that's our job here, right? And, and, and part of this format is a lot about trusting your intuition, right, Robert? And, and playing the natural moves, because here's the thing, at some point, both sides will be under time pressure, and you want to be the one with more time when that critical moment happens. Absolutely. Well, I'm so, just shot. I'm still yeah. like getting over that, because it seemed like everything was going vid its way. Okay, we, we did criticize his slower approach, but that doesn't mean that his position wasn't good. And all of a sudden, things started going south. And then they yep. really w went south when he uh, blundered his queen. So uh, he's trying to get back in this one. Uh, now it's making me think, Danny. Yep. I have a question for you. Based on what we've seen thus far, the quicker the time controls get, is that beneficial for Vidit or for Zavid? Well, remember, Bullet is a different animal because just when you're, the fact that you're under time pressure right from the start changes often the tempo of the game. You're not going to see someone take 58 seconds on a move like A3 ever, right? So I don't know that we've really seen a time scramble to judge, but so but given what I know about Andreasian on our server and what I don't know about Vidit, I would agree that haven't been impressed so far. The one game that I felt like he was much better under time pressure was that position where I was calling for knight a5, knight c6, right? And he eventually just made a bad decision under 10 seconds to trade in that rook ending, right? Losing his yeah. winning chances. So so I don't, I don't disagree with you. Um, this has been one of the most fun graphs to follow as far as our stats go and the emotes of those little heads there. You see a really back and forth affair, given uh, given what the prediction said as far as these players and, and how we how we can judge them with our algorithm that we like to pretend is a really magical, brilliant black box. Not, I'm just kidding. Smarter chess, it is it is really complicated and brilliant. Um, but uh, no jokes aside, this is this has been a back and forth affair, and and I, I'm I'm with you, Robert. I think if the time controls get faster, we're we're really going to find out quickly. I think whether Vidit. Is, is ready to, to play at that speed. Yeah, I mean, I, I like his position in this game as well. It's nice in F4. Uh, you know, how can you complain about that? The pawn on D4, looking a bit iffy. Um, not the best pawn I've seen, but this idea of just playing F6 to open up the F file, cement the nice place on the F4 square. He didn't take on D3 because that bishop on D3, not doing all that much. You could take on G6 if you're white, but I, I don't think I have a problem with you doing that. And the question really is if bishop g6, knight g6, can then white play e6 and say, you know, am I going to be able to keep this pass pawn? I don't think so. The move rook e8, you know, for starters, looks like it might just win that pawn immediately. And, um, yeah, you, it's oh, talk about overextended pawns. Mm -hmm. That would certainly be an overextended pawn. So now white needs to find something here. Um, I really don't like white's position right now. I, I love the fact that this rook is opening up into the game. You know, for example, e takes f6, queen takes f6, and I mean, all of black's pieces are aiming towards the king side. So that does not look like a good opportunity. Huh. Hmm. I'm trying to find moves here for white. Let's see. Yeah, Bishop f1, both. very passive. It's kind of Bishop. weird, because optically I feel like I've been maybe failing to appreciate how irritating this position is for white. Um, but the more you look at it, the more it's like, it seems like white has more space and nothing looks that out of place. But this bishop on a7 and this rook on, F2, on f8 have plans on f2. And you have to keep those types of tactics in mind. 
Okay. All things considered, I think this wasn't a bad choice. And now he just put his bishop on e3. And bishop g5, he go back queen f7. May then put the bishop on e3. You sort of gain an interesting tempo by doing that. Because bishop e3, this bishop takes h3. So bishop g5, queen f7, bishop e3. Then yep. if you play bishop h3, you have knight g5 hitting your queen on f7, removing that knight from being under attack and hitting that bishop that will be on h3. So bishop h3 yeah, is a tactic. Very nice little game of tickle there, everybody. Highlighted the tactic on the analysis board. So Vitted stops it, renewing the threat of bishop takes h3, possibly. Yeah, for sure. Bishop h3 is in the cards. You can't play knight e5 for white, because knight e5, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes e3, and then the f2 square yep. is going to be blocked for the taking. So, hmm. So... Zavin remains under pressure here and and under time pressure to go with it um, down a minute on the clock. Yeah, I will say, in the, even though Zavin just won that game, in the last, uh, what have we, we played six total games. Yep. In the last four games, I really like Vidit's... Uh, no, I agree. Yeah. I think um, since the, the rough start, Vidit has seemed like he's in control despite the way he, he mismanaged that last one. So I think Zavin has a little more to prove right now and get a game that he that he feels good about from start to finish, right? He hasn't had a game that he felt good about from start to finish probably since game one, honestly. And game two is also nice. That's yeah. Sicilian. Um, but I, I, I think perhaps people underestimate how important the momentum is. And we talk about tilt, right? Yep. Uh, we've seen plenty of players go on tilt. I, the biggest example to me is the match between MVL and Hikaru from... Right. Was it two, or right even, even a player like MVL could go on tilt. Yeah. Right. And he, he lost that match to Hikaru, but he lost like you know, eight games in a row at some point just yep. because his head wasn't working right psychologically. He was yep. in a I must win now territory. Um, and for, you know, for Zavin, it was very important to get that win on the board. So I, I think despite his uh, struggles within the games, that is definitely going to help a lot. Now Bishop takes G4 is just played. Seems pretty and straightforward here. Knight F5. Black is just so much better in this type of structure. It seems like we're simplifying everyone, but with a weakness on the dark squares that white has to defend with this sort of Frankenstein pawn on e3, um, and uh, and and the access to the only open or even semi-open files on the board belonging to black, this, these become really tough positions to defend. And uh, again, white remains down on the clock. Yep. And isolated deep on. I feel like I'm watching a Capablanca game right I now. I know. This has been a very positionally instructive match so far. And I wonder how it'll stay in bullet. But I think that um, if we if we stay in a close match, which we have been, I mean, uh, been uh, pretty good play by both sides. So I wonder Bishop, how many more positional masterpieces we'll see. I like this move, Bishop of 2, because it threatened Rook E7. Yep. I like Bishop B6, Rook A5, Rook B5. Here it comes. Oh, Rook A5, Rook B5. Elevator. Put the rook on the elevator. And I guess that's a rook a5 is rook e8 check, which really deserves attention because rook a5, rook e8, king h7, rook 1 to e7, and all of a sudden my b7 pawn is feeling a little bit iffy. So uh, Okay, but late. we're going to find out. He's going for it. So wait, wait, rook e7. Rook 1 to e7. Take on e7, rook b5. And if rook takes b7, do I have bishop takes d4? Yeah, but I like I'd like that for white because I have three on two on the king side, and I think I'll be able to distract your king away and put my blockade your deep on with my king. So, so why didn't he go for it? Why did he take? Because now he's back to being worse for sure. If you're if you're Zavin, I mean, black has pressure here, pressure on d4, and uh -oh. there goes the a pawn. Ah, and there goes the a pawn. So Zavin making us think that he's much worse, and in fact, just he had a trick in mind, back door. Yeah, this is not good. There goes the neighborhood. Um, actually, this has been definitely misplayed. Is there a, there's a move like rook f4, perhaps. Okay, he, he relocates the bishop. One nice thing about it is there's outside chances that this king on g1 gets in a little bit of trouble with the bishop holding squares. But uh, hard to see a way in now if you're black. Bishop c1. That looks like a way in. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, th that pawn on b2 looks juicy. But this is a good idea from um, Zavin's perspective as well. a5, a6. Just quickly push that pawn down the board. Yep. Give yourself a new target. b7 is very well protected. So what you really need to do is create a target on the c6 square. So 
Okay, trades trade. with the rook. I'm a little surprised by that, but I guess he... Okay, so if the bishop comes to c3 and white plays a6 to trade, then the c6 pawn is weak. Um, I guess I don't know why. I felt like keeping the rook on the board allowed for more counterplay for black. But uh, now Vidit going into a bit of a think, his time advantage may be disappearing here pretty quickly. Yep, rook f4. Wait. Oh, bishop d4. G no, g3 doesn't work. Wait, what? Did he just give away the d4 pawn? That didn't make any sense. I think he was considering g3, but g3 doesn't work with rook takes f3. And I saw Zavin just shake his head. Yep. So he really blundered that. Yeah, just bye-bye. So can he, what can he do here? a6 doesn't really help because pawn takes a6. So rook b8. So what's the deal? Just rook a4 now? Don't play rook b4 because then a6 is a problem. Yeah. But rook b4 just take But it's a two pass pawns. I mean, this should just be straightforward for black. White needs desperate counterplay on the uh, on the f file. Threats like f5 and f6 would be the only thing to to save the day. And Vidit's not going to have any of it. I think bringing the rook, yeah, nice move. Keep the king cut off on the third rank and then and then start using what your mama gave you here on the c and d file. Yep, and it looks like, yeah, it's, I don't know what, so how, I guess the question becomes, is that, is Black's King a little bit, not in danger of getting mated or anything like that, but is it in any danger of being able to avoid a bunch of white checks? Right. So, for example, if I go C5. Mm -hmm. There's H5 then and then a bunch of checks with the Rook, right? Rook C6. Yeah, I would, I would probably start with F5 and then just, you know, have Rook C6 check and Rook back and be annoying. So he says with H5, King H6 here. I don't want to take on H5 or do I? King yeah. H5, Rook C6. I, I like King F6 even. Keep the yeah. king, keep the pawn split. And uh, and then as soon as you've got this counterplay under control, get back to what you have over here. I, I think this has been creative defense by Zavin for sure. Um, if it's enough to hold, we're going to find out. But but I still think Black should be winning with best play. But, wow, look at him. Rook d7, keeping an eye on both g7 and preventing c5 and d4, right? You can't push any pawn without losing something. You have now rook g6. Oh, well, he has that play pawn. king takes f4. No, no, he Rook f4 check. Oh, but then king g3. That's... Rook takes f4, king g3, and the so, g7 pawn rook still g4. falls. Instead of king f4, he had rook g4. Oh, that might have been his last chance to win. Yeah, that, that would have been a good winning chance. Right here, chance. everyone. Rook to g4. Because the trade into the king and pawn ending is definitely losing for white. Too many things falling. Rook g4. Missed opportunity, but for it sure. misses another opportunity, and, it, and it's uh, been a couple of games. The, the only two draws we had were games that seemed like they got away from Vidit. Uh, but okay, maybe he's... Uh, Maybe he's feeling a little bit sorry once he gets an advantage playing against his teammate. We've got a nice, fun image to show everyone and remind you that these two will be on the same team coming up on Saturday, September 8th, in our first ever Pro Chess League All-Star game. Kind of the, the unofficial start to the 2019 Pro Chess League season. So pretty excited for that. Um, big stars playing, and uh, make sure you're around September 8th as our next... Our next five-minute game gets started here. This may end up being our last five-minute game, Robert, depending on how long it goes. Roughly 11 minutes on the total the total game clock right now. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was just took a peek at the, the kind of game clock and saw that if this game goes the full distance, it will be the last five-minute game. And for Vidit, well, you've been playing well. You just have the black pieces. You... Um, we're sort of outplaying Zavin. Z well, Zavin blundered. Let's be let's be real. I thought that at first Vidit's position looked very good. Yeah. Then Zavin was holding very well. He's putting up tenacious defense, and um, yeah. So right now, Knight H4. Okay. The idea is to get the two bishops. This is a, an opening that I play very frequently online, and it's very simple. Two bishops and claim that I'm going to try to have a long-term advantage with the diagonals. The problem is exactly what black is doing. You put a pawn C6, keep the pawn E5, and you're blockading both bishops yep. with a very strong center. And that's the way to compete against bishops, is by yep. creating pawn chains that uh, lock them in. So for example, if white ever plays D4, black can play E4, and that bishop on B2 looks silly. Yep. If white puts the bishop on G2 and plays for E4, 
black can play either pawn takes e4, but also d4. And once again, both, closed. and both bishops end up looking silly because yep. your own pawn blockades one of your bishops and the enemy pawn blocks the other. So um, that's instructive there. I was highlighting, doing my best to highlight what you were talking about with the pawn reactions in the center because I think it's important for players as you develop your chess understanding to be aware of where your pieces belong in the current structure and also what might happen if that if the position becomes more closed or more open and so you have to be anticipating that he plays c4 now this is a way to commonly try to pry open more squares for the light square bishop but as you see Zavin reacts by bringing the knight to c5 there may be threats of e4 for black which is one way that he tries to take advantage of the fact that this light square bishop isn't on its normal diagonal um f1 a6 so a lot of just instructive things if you if you read between the lines in terms of how these players react to each other and and see that ultimately it's all building around white wants to open the position for the bishops and uh, black is trying to compensate for the knights versus the bishops with a big center and potentially threats on specific color complexes and specific squares that's kind of how the knight can be on equal footing with a bishop is to make sure that it gets access to outpost squares and these sort of things so Sorry for that long little uh, breath of lecture there, Robert, but just wanted to really drive that point home because the five-minute portion of these matches is kind of our last chance to really get instruction across before things get even more crazy, right? And we're all just spectators enjoying the fun. Well, first of all, you never have to apologize to me for making profound points because, you, you know, I you, respect... You're, are you saying that because your mom is watching? My mom is not watching. I'm pretty sure she's on a plane right now. Your mom is always watching, first of Aww. all. That's, that's the sweetest thing you've ever said. But, uh, I don't know if it is, but yeah. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> but <laughs> we can't talk about the other stuff. But you, you, know, you made some very good points there. And I think also, you know, speaking of five-minute portion, look at the clock situation. Zavin yep. moving quickly with the black pieces. And look at the center. The knight on d5, that bishop on g2 is just staring at you know, a brick wall. Mm -hmm. The knight on c5, very active. And the bishop on b2, well, you want to play d4, but you have to be worried about the consequences of uh, a trade on the d4 square, for example, where let's say d4, pawn takes d4, bishop d4, there's knight f4 as a possibility with the queen on e2 hanging. So he did play queen f1, presumably to allow him to play d4 now. Yep. No, you're right. And this is... Uh... Interesting battle given that white has this long-term potential here, right? If the position gets open, but these knights are hitting b3 and d3, it's really tricky for white to make sure that he doesn't drop anything or give, up, give away too many big squares for those ponies before he starts to kick them back. But he is all to, everything he's been doing, Robert, is about the maneuver you highlighted. He backed up the queen, he's moved the rook, he's trying to prepare the ability to punch these knights out of the center. And black is getting ready to meet the, you know, those sort of tactics. Because look at the d3 square, the rook on d8, eyeing uh, yeah. d3. The what? knight can't move to c4 because knight b3 is hanging. Yep. But your, your d4 now is certainly worth a thought. But after d4, pawn d4, maybe queen comes at d6 and threatens mate on h2. So it's something that white has to keep an eye on as well. So queen. Yeah, I was going to say he played bishop c7 also to open up that d6 square for the for the queen and bishop battery at some point. Highlighted that. I like this move 96. I like the way Zavin has played this honestly, and with a 4-3 lead, even holding the position would be you know kind of a match win at this point. Given that if you asked him whether he would take, I think a, a game lead out of any portion of this of this match, five minute, three minute, or one minute, he'd be happy to say, yeah. So I mean. Well why do you go knight g5? What was wrong with queen d6 there? Uh, you know I like batteries, so I'm not going to argue. I think white's going to play knight f3 and then knight g5. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. I want to be a little bit more forceful. Yeah, I, I I played it assuming that's what you wanted, and I, I agree with you. Because now the knight can actually slide back to f1. Yeah, the f1 square changes everything. makes it a lot harder to continue your attack when that knight can't be undermined. So this was the highlight. This was the the idea that Robert was highlighting everyone on the analysis board here. Queen d6, there's no f1 square if knight f3, knight g5, and okay, maybe it's not winning. There's there's even moves like queen e2, but then there's knight f4. So I, I, I wonder if you're right, Robert. I wonder if that was a big opportunity missed for black. Yeah, something looks weird here. I mean, okay, black still looks fine. But now you have to worry about bishop takes d5 at some moment, you know, perhaps winning that pawn. Okay, h3 does have to, uh, has to have an eye kept on it. And, okay, I can't go h4. You know, it's too risky. So queen e7, I guess 
potentially heading for C7, but there's no threat. I mean, we just established that there's no threat on this diagonal with the knight on F1. So how is black going to make progress? Rook D3 looks like a fine move. Just you know, now rook D3, rook D1, and eventually maybe I'll play even play for uh, taking on D5. So knight F6. Yeah. Okay, when, when does F4 come into the action? Not yet, apparently. Okay, so rook d8, rook d8, rook d8, and then f4. That looks very tempting if I'm white. Just get, getting that, and he's going for it. We're always so happy when Maynard Monkey is gifted a sub from Chess Bay. Shout out. Chess Bay, you're amazing. 111 gifted subs, by the way. That's a lot. That is a ton. Oh, I realize I'm not even sub. I was trying to use some emotes, and I can't do it because I'm not sub. That's not good. Well, we'll fix that. Uh, knight e6, here comes queen a7. No. Queen a7, tempting. I guess it doesn't attack b7 with bishop h2 check in the cards, but certainly something to... I mean, the queen h2 is not even a threat, right? Like, if the king is an escape square. I'm liking white's position more and more. Yeah, he uh, definitely has seen the worst of it. I think Vidit escaped or got away with one in those, in those moments when... Uh, when Zavin didn't didn't play your idea of queen d6 and then knight g5 after it. So now now the bishop here is looking better and better. Everything we highlighted in the beginning of this game, the light squares, the open diagonals, the potential of the fact that most positions eventually become open, starting to look better and better for white if we head to an endgame. Yep. And so how should black proceed? That's the essential Chess Bay heard your call. You can now use emotes. Oh, that makes me so happy. Hess Bay. Where's your Hess Bay, love? Show me your ponytail. <laughs> I got so happy I used the OMG emote. Timothy P. Connolly said, Ricky Bobby. Don't start me about Ricky Bobby. Yeah, look at anyway. White just unwinding here. I mean, this is really instructive from the perspective that this is kind of how White plays these games. Like you said, you've played a lot of these positions, and we know that uh, Hikaru Nakamura plays a lot of Hedgehog, Double Fiend, Keto setups, and Blitz as well. Um, but uh, but Black missed his opportunity when he had the big center that could have converted into that pressure on the king side. Now I, I like White's chances more and more. Yeah, and the, you know, the question is, how do we go from liking White's position to turning it into a win, right? That's right. the really difficult part. And that's something that is true for players of even the highest levels, right? You yep. can see someone like Fabiano Caruana having this position with the white side and making, you know, turning this into a full point rather than just an advantage is yep. very difficult. So let's talk about ideas here. And there's not that much time for each player, but what is Black going to do? Well, Black's going to sit and probably do nothing. Because any try to sit and do nothing, hold tight, yeah. Because any pawn move may create another a weakness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you play f6, for example, well, right now your knight on d5 is under attack. So I would go ahead and protect that. Yeah, f6 weakens point, the light squares or the g6 exactly. one, right? A g5 f6 combination for black is something that may be worth considering. But once more, this knight on d5 is now definitely possible to take right. because it leaves black with a double well, pawn. Not here, right? Obviously, the queen's under fire, but um. Yeah, you can you can move the queen to d4. Okay, knight e6 might just be met by queen e5. And Vidit is really flexing the muscles of the two bishops in this type of open board. Oh, queen e5, bishop c7, queen e4. I guess you can still do it, but it looks scary. But it's just becoming... I mean, okay, the, the time pressure still favors Zavin right now slightly, but I feel like these are going to be positions where white's able to play a lot of moves quickly, intuitively, knight c4, the knight's coming to e5, and, and black is really feeling the pressure. Short, yep. of, short of a blunder, this is going to be hard for Black to hold in time scramble. And officially, as predicted, this is the last game of the five-minute portion, as time Why? is up. Why is he not going Queen A7? I don't know. I've been calling for that move since, you know, 1972. Um, yeah, Queen A7 was actually very good there. He's like he, it's like he has a blind spot to that square for some reason, because it's, it's been there a few times. Um, okay, 19 <laughs> seconds right now for Zavin. A little bit less now. And it's the last match of this time. Uh, so Queen A7, it's Queen do A7 it. again. Is he really going to take a draw under time pressure? OMG. What in uh, the world is he doing? 
Well, this this portion is done. Super strange, though. I mean, for him to just settle. If we look at the fact that in this position, everyone, Queen A7 is is what is the problem with this move? It hits B7. It's exactly how you would want to undermine and and strengthen the uh, the pressure of the bishop. So uh, strange stuff. The players are going to take a quick break as we head into the three minute portion. I mean, quickly, Robert, give your thoughts before we take that 30 to 60 second break. A one game lead for Zavin, but it feels like more opportunities have been missed for Vidit than they have for the Armenian. Yeah, I, I agree with that. The first two games, Zavin showed his strength, particularly in tactical positions. But since then, it's been all Vidit, despite the fact that he blundered away that game. Yeah. Now, I will say that as the time control quickens, I'm a bit worried about Vidit's style of play. Yep. Yes, he gets nagging advantages and tries to milk them into full points, but he hasn't been able to secure enough full points, and that is why he's down in this match thus far. Zavin, speedy player, very talented in his own right. I am worried about Vidit, although I will be more worried if he doesn't tie the match or take the lead in this three-minute portion. Agree with you 100%, and will we look back in some of these games in the five-minute portion, like this last one we have on the board for you, that maybe opportunities were missed uh, by Vidit, but... We're going to see what happens as the time control gets faster. Yes, Scarlett Evans, you asked a question. Do bits and donations go toward the prize fund? You are darn right that they do. Uh, everything, pretty much besides subs, goes directly toward uh, the prize fund for the players. So we're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Remember, you can play the uh, the Photoshop contest for a chance to win a one-year diamond membership on Twitter. Uh, try to find, come up with something better than our astronauts currently watching the Speeches Championship in space. And uh, we will be right back. And as we said, it's a close one. Thank you to everyone who's with us, all 1,500 of you, whether you be watching at Twitch TV slash chess or chess.com TV. We love you. Uh, appreciate. We've seen you, everyone in the chess TV chat. Sorry I haven't uh, engaged too much, but uh, definitely a back and forth affair, as, as uh, one of our Diamond members was saying. I forget. I think it was peace, peace something. We're not going to have peace on the board for sure. And look at the first time we've really seen a pre-match uh, favorite, according to our stats, uh, really, really fall behind the eight ball to the point where Andreasian, you said we're going to find out whether Bullet is where, um, whether Bullet is where this this match gets separated, and uh, according to us, we feel that Zavin should be the favorite in that faster time control, Robert. Yeah, I mean, I really have not seen Vida play enough to be able to comment. I have seen Zavin play a ton, and he is very quick, and he is very strong. So I, I know I trust Zavin's skill, but you know, I, I sort of always resort back to um, the classical time control and say, okay, yeah. I know Vida is the higher rated player, the stronger player, but that doesn't mean much as the clock ticks down when both players are so strong and they're capable of seeing things quickly. It's really about who is in better form and who is, um, you know, holding on. And Zavin, he's bending it but not breaking. The three-minute time control, it's, uh, some have called it the greatest time control of all time. I don't know. Um, but uh, we're, that's where we're headed, right? 60 minutes of three-minute, what every kid wants for Christmas, and uh, we are officially underway, I believe. Yes, we are. Awesome. Awesome, awesome possum. All right, E4. So uh, we we haven't seen too much, too many of these uh, Italians since that game that Zavin lost actually as white, right, where he really got outplayed from start to finish. And now now he's going back to that game, and we'll see we'll see where it goes. If, for those of you just joining us, a position that ultimately gave Vidit uh, a real real dominant. Uh, exertion on the d file right the rooks penetrated and and things got weird so you should be upset that you missed it but um but okay this is going to be a slightly different approach here for for zavin the a pawns pushed early what what say you about this structure where white might be winning the bishop pair but still has the d3 weakness to worry about in a lot of positions because it's an open file yeah, and, you know, Black is not too concerned that Bishop takes c6, so that the b takes c6. The real idea is that Black's going to gain some pressure on the king side with an eventual f5. Um, now f5 is not nearly as powerful as the knight on g3, and that was... Um, but here comes the, the bishop to g6 and d3, as, as we said. The biggest weakness in this structure is the only pawn that's backward on an open file, right? Pretty obvious to see that d3 pawn is a problem, and... Uh, 
And Zavin's going to take a second to try to figure out what he wants to do, because this is looking more and more like what we saw before, where now Vidit's going to go after the bishop here. I really like this move, knight a7. I don't know. Somehow it feels like there's a reason he didn't go back to this one uh, since he lost uh, lost that game, because this is uh, this just looks bad for white. Yeah, the bishop on b5 is about to be captured, and I mean, c6, you, you can choose how you want to capture it. So... Wait a second. C6 now? Isn't your bishop C just lost? C6 and the bishop is lost because he, forgot yeah, about he C6. just backs up. That's a that's a blunder caught on camera, right? Where you're like, you know, what what are they what's that show where people do dumb stuff on camera? Uh Candid Camera. Oh. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I was gonna say uh, the Real Housewives, but yeah. Um the uh you're right. So you didn't yeah, laugh I, at my Real Housewives joke. I don't like Real Housewives. Exactly. So just... That's the whole point. Is it, it's, What's the show where people do dumb stuff on camera? But it pains me to even think about it, so that's why I'm just... Robert, it's just like, get with the program and laugh at my jokes. Um, <laughs> no. Can't make me. All right. Bishop E3, the B5 bishop hangs. Zavin, you could tell by his facial expression that it was a blunder. Um, and uh, we'll see if he can come up with enough counterplay to, to justify playing on. But I'm expecting we're going to get this match evened up here. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out a way to get the counterplay. The good thing for Zavin when it comes to getting counterplay is they're bishops of opposite color. And the reason why that's useful is, well, they, they can't challenge each other. He plays this move C4, clearly trying to go C5. And, well, those are you have two pawns right now, yep. right? And so he takes one of them. So queen D3, he'll take, or we'll play C5 right away. I would take on... Mm. I, even if you play C5, my knight's coming to C4, so... Uh, I forgot about knight c4. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't really think there's enough pressure here to, okay, to queen, buy the queen compensation. Queen one, rook one, bishop c2. And yeah, just... I was also going to highlight that a4 was probably possible to undermine c4, but bishop c2 looks pretty good. What's the response? The problem is you want to go rook d2, bishop b3, bishop c5, trapping the rook on f8, but then knight takes c4, hits all the rooks. So all of them. All of them. All yeah. of them. It's a fork party. It is. We have we have emotes for that, right? Fork yeah. emote. Yeah, do it. Let your spam out, Robert. All right, I'm gonna get 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 the fork going. I love you learning how to twitch, <laughs> which is different than twerking. Twitching is different than twerking. Just I've been working harder on my twitch game than my twerk game. It's good. Uh, all right, no, I mean this is. I, I don't know exactly why. So what was the threat? I guess there was a slightly more irritating threat than we thought if bishop takes b3 bishop c5 the rook couldn't move because rook e8 and back rank um so that it did have a little bit more to coordinate than we gave white credit for but i think knight f6 with tempo and then taking b3 is still what the doctor ordered so let's see knight f6 rook d2 bishop b3 bishop c5 okay he's trying to get that rook on the f8 square he is trapping it in that situation so he's whoa that's okay. a scary interesting play. Rook to d8. Wowzers. But I guess bishop g5 is just met by f6. Yep. And he's pointing out that the b3 pawn is backward. b4, not really an option. Black captures it. So what about... Oh, no, you can't play rook to one. I almost highlighted a move that can't be played. <laughs> so, um... And, of course, you want to play rook takes d7, rook d7, rook e8 checkmate, but there's a bishop on e3 that's in the way of that rook. Yep. So he plays rook e2, but so after bishop b3, he'll play rook d2. And that's not what black wanted to see happen here. Like, not at all. So knight e7 now might be the move. But after knight e7, this rook takes d7 as a possibility. Right? So, because you need to do something with the pin coming. So like, for example, bishop b3, rook e to d2, bishop takes c4, rook takes d7. That's not looking good. So he plays knight e7, but I still don't think he's he's in time for this. So rook d6, knight f5 comes into play, and that should be uh, good for... Oh, yeah, I think knight f5 now. Just defend. There it is, knight yeah, f5. Yeah, defends everything. With Tempe, as they say. Do they say that? Well, I think they say with tempo. Tempe. Tempe would be plural, and it's not really getting multiple. There were multiple tempos on the rook, the bishop. I mean, 
I consider bishops better than knights, so. That's fair. I'll give you that. Bishop, um, the... This is actually kind of irritating. I think I think black can move the rook and let white sack the exchange, but you might want to play a move like a4. A4, Straight. I'm worried about pawn a4, rook a4, c5, and then I'm, you know, c6 is happening. Ah. Yeah, something tells me Vidit has not shown the, uh -oh. the best of technique here. Who's better now? The rook, the, the knight is hanging. Yep. This is bananas. Isn't white just now up a pawn? How has Vidit just completely blown up a blown a position where his opponent blundered a piece out of the opening? Yeah, that's a, this is not not very good technique. I mean, at best he gets a draw here, but I mean, you know, going back to a position like this where Bishop C two was first played, I feel like he just really overthought things um, with Knight D seven. I think Bishop takes B three was was pretty straightforward despite rook, rook the B3. tactics. So Play Rook B three, okay, or not? Wow. Okay, well, black black should be able to hold a draw if not for the time, but I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. Bishop takes f3. Why didn't you take f3? I don't know. It's a good question. Now he did it. Does it now? Still not easy to hold the draw with no time on the clock. Yeah, but he no, I agree. It's it's not just a a no-brainer, but should be doable. Yeah, now with the king very, being very close, it's actually much yeah. easier. But also with the king being close here, you might fall victim to some kind of you know, checks. That's right. always the problem. That's, that was the threat there, of rook d6 check winning the bishop. But, okay, again, rook bishop d8 c6. Check. Okay, but put the bishop somewhere on the diagonal where it's safe. Rook to b1. Okay. So rook b, there's king a6 only move, but it's... Oh, oh he blunders his rook! Oh, my God! <laughs> Sovin! Oh, my gosh! Oh, no. Dude, that literally just threw out my back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I jumped forward and I started coughing and my back twerked. Speaking of twerking, <laughs> twerking oh, not no. to be confused with twitching. Oh my gosh, that was bananas. Oh wow! I mean, we it were hurts. just talking about how Black, you know, was completely winning. Oh my gosh! Wow, wow, wow. That's very sad. Okay, well, Vidit shakes his head, knows he didn't deserve that one, <laughs> but uh, but got away with it anyway. They do the rematch, and uh, I think this is a rare time where I won't be judged too harshly for spamming something of my own face, looking like an idiot. O M, gosh, that was unbelievable. I mean, it, the swings in that game. First, Vidit wins a piece because um, Zabu yeah. blunders the C six move. Then, you know, we say, oh, wait, he actually might have more counterplay than we're giving credit for. It should have been just great. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, you know, he the blundered. The table's turned, yeah. Oh, we've seen this position before. I gave credit to Zavin the first time for going bishop c8. I'm not giving him credit this time because I thought his position was very bad. And by very bad, I don't mean, like, losing. I just mean that it's very one-sided. And so I'm not pleased if, I, you know, if I'm Zavin's coach, which I'm not. I'm not very pleased to see the fact that he's repeating a line that got him into quite a deal of trouble. So yep. uh, I look at the bishop on g7, and I say, hey, you've got a no future ahead of you. I see yep. the bishop on e6. I say, well, you're protecting d5, but you're blocking your e-pawn, which wants to move. And I see your knight on c6. Okay, attack d4 all you want. I'm covered with my knight on f3. And I just prefer the, the squares at all of white's pieces. I, I don't disagree. I just, again, feel like the... Right now it's pressure, but I'll, I'll play devil's advocate to what happened last game. Black has no positional weaknesses, so black has less space. White has dominance over the only open file. Okay, and, and, and I'm not saying that pressure can't lead to weaknesses, but that's one of the things about having less space. As long as you don't have any positional problems to go with it, there's always the potential that if you liquefy that pressure, you're going to be okay. And I feel like in these structures, white's white's big big money play is something on the king side given that that's where the natural open lines are and even moves like h4 h5 here just like poke at weaknesses okay black is more prepared in this one to play moves like bishop g4 if white played h4 but um again back to jokes about how much danny loves mating over other types of positional play i mean the bottom line is i think that white missed an opportunity the last game and we'll see if he does here as well yeah that just i mean i'm Still a little bit shocked by that last game, yeah. but um, I just I don't like having these positions from the black side. You just have no space, no room to work with. Um, 
if you're going to play for B5 as black, you need to make sure your knight gets to C4 very quickly. And you're just under pressure. And I'm not just saying that because that new queen movie is coming out that I'm really excited to see. But, um, you know, it's just constant pressure. Yep, it is. Shout out to Books Are Nice. Thank you for the bits. Uh, despite the the comment in the beginning by by some of the fans, who are these guys? These aren't the biggest names we've had. Not Nakamura or Magnus or those names we've had play in the Speech as Championship over the years. But we may actually have more prize fund donations than we've had for some of those bigger names. So uh, thanks to everyone for the for the support of these guys. And uh, and okay. So again, we're we're in a position where white is better. No one's denying that. Also up on the clock. I'm just sc- still skeptical about how much of an advantage it becomes um, here for, for Vidit. What's the problem with taking on the, with the B-pawn? Like, it's something I would have done immediately. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, he, took, he took a little too much time on that, I agree. Maybe he was enjoying whatever's in that bug there. I'm going to guess T, not copy. Yeah, he's a good guess. So I, knight A5 to C4 is tempting. So knight A5, I guess queen B6 may ruin my plan. But I wanted to go knight C4. If you take me on C4, then maybe I'll be able to put my bishop on the D5 square. And he's going for it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, another thing is if you take me on E3, I'm not sure if I really care, right? Because I just take up my pawn and say, well, now D4, you'll never get to that square. And my knight can just maneuver around the board. So, like, queen B6, knight C4, queen A7. Am I going to get my queen trap? He didn't like oh. that A7 square before, but maybe he'll find it this time. That honestly is one of the bigger misses of the match. Yep. I mean, okay, blaming your rook is the all-time, but... Um, not playing queen a7 in a good yep. look it was, not, it was not very no i told it was like he had a blind spot to the square the whole game it was very strange but uh my uh, fun master mike our stat boy as we like to call him during these events has given us a lot of a lot of information including that after losing the first game of the match vidit has not gone back to the Cairo Con, um and has uh and it's actually three and a half out of four with black since then although that last game he won was only because of the rook blunder um yep i've actually seen mike typing to me but i've ignored him the entire time so sorry mike i didn't want to call that out. i thought it was like a, a weird like a kinky game you guys were playing but okay <laughs> wait uh, now c4 is just hanging yeah c4 is hanging and i'm not sure that takes f3 okay why did he what was he worried about with bishop takes f3 was there really some sort of perpetual there i guess there was no real reason to open the king and he's just trying to claim that my knight will defend e3 your backward pawn on b7 i can go rook b1 Try to play for c6 myself. So now rook b1 you know, to b6. I hear you, but I showed on the analysis board. I don't know. That seemed like a straightforward thing because winning that d pawn would let would have led to such a huge central advantage for white. But okay, white is definitely playing for two results nonetheless here. Yeah. So rook c6 from black might be necessary. Ooh, to- did he what? not stop c6? C6 looked really strong there. A6 was hanging in the end. Yeah. He didn't go for it. He still have. What is he doing? He's, he's going queen c2. He's, no, he can't go queen c2. He should go five. Just... I don't mind this either, honestly. I don't mind it either, but I uh, c6 with that a6 pawn falling looked like a quick run of the a file. So, um, push him, baby. <coughs> where's uh, where's Yaz when you need him? Okay, yeah, still. B, b7 is not happy. B7 is not happy. But d4 is an so opportunity for counterplay. Ooh, I there love that is. move. Rook d6. And a queen f6 check was a threat if you didn't play move that rook away. So he, yeah. Uh, and that queen f6 was winning on the spot. Very nice tactic. Yeah. Um, so, overwhelming, okay. overwhelming the defense of d7, everyone. The reason why this is going to be good if black doesn't get enough counterplay is, okay, it's so a queen f6 check, king h7, rook d8. You have uh, bishop g7 at the end. You're not getting mated. So he's just trying to get the queens off the board. Yeah, the end game is just phenomenal. Yeah, black has no moves. Although, Although oh no, a, a5 is weak, which is one... Sorry. I was going to say that, and then I realized bishop d2 is not possible. Not because... possible, but it is something that keeps this knight sort of in prison, right? Because you don't want to allow that counterplay. So, I... Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing an aggressive defensive approach here by Zavin, and I like it. Me too. Now, all of a sudden, black is looking good. Rookie 6, F takes E5, D4 is look undermined. This, look at this bishop just sort of pointing out that the knight has problems. Okay, that, that was probably the right decision, but can you really win this rook ending? No, this is going to be a draw. Rook A5, Rook E7 check, King G6, Rook takes B7. Rook no, but I, I think he's going to go King of 4, King of 5. He's going to try to use, use the two pawns and the threats against the black king. Yeah, F4 is all instead of King F4, F4 as well. Yeah, both King F4 and F4 are both the moves I would be going for. 
Didn't Wesley lose an endgame like this against Mama Jarov? Um, uh, you know, the one thing about Vitis so far that I, I'm going to be critical about is I, I he just... And maybe he likes his chances in bullet that much. Uh, we definitely need to make a note that we should be asking him about that in the post-game interview because it feels like he has willingly gone for the peaceful result when he was when he was in the right to push for the win. Would you say that's fair? I feel like I, there's been three games where we've said that at least. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's, you know, him going for the bullet as much as just perhaps just not being on his A-plus game today. Well, that's but, why I'm curious. I'm, 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 now I'm starting to think maybe we give him the benefit of the doubt that maybe he had a match strategy, you know, to get to the bullet. I mean, that that's how many times we've seen him not play for the win when he probably should have, in our, in yeah. our, from our view. You know, I think he's, from from my stance here, I, I feel like he's been playing objective chess. And that, that's not saying he's finding all the best moves. But I think he's maybe just not as big a risk taker as some of the other players are. And so when he sees this, you know, the, like in that earlier game, instead of playing queen a7, he saw that, okay, black looked pretty solid. Let me just repeat the moves. Maybe he felt that objectively it was equal. Uh, and so he went for the draw. But I do agree with you. Um, you know, he is missing opportunities, it feels like, yeah. by not by not going for it. So Well, the match remains level, and I think this is the furthest along you and I have had, um, you know, so far in the first round of the Speed Chess Championship, where, where the match was level about uh, about halfway through. So Dominguez and MVL had a... Okay, uh, okay, yeah. No, you're right. But no, but I mean, this is this has felt very, very equal as well. So yeah. I, yeah, I wasn't trying to say you're wrong. I'm just saying... Yeah, that was another match where both players were really up to the test. Now, yep. so d4 at some point soon is going to trap this bishop on c5. So the bishop takes f4, well, queen takes b2 happens, you're not happy with that. So I don't know why he thought before playing rook b2. Because you're know, before playing rook takes f4. And now from black, you should probably play d5. So you're going to have to, right? Oh, no, he finds another way to save the bishop by pinning the d3 pawn to the queen. Yeah, he didn't want to allow d4, e5. That pawn chain can be kind of annoying and uh, restricting. So, Okay, Please. well, d4 now would have been met by bishop to c4. And skewer emote, the one emote we still don't have. Um, bishop to a7, okay. So I would, hmm, d5, you're going to play e5, probably. Yeah, and white is just sort of, sitting on the potential pressure on the king side, right? We talk about everyone, this bishop already being sort of fully developed on c1 in this structure. You're looking for tactics. Knight f5 is coming, and, and maybe h6 and g7 are, are being being called out. I actually really like either knight h5 or knight f5 here. One of those moves got to be played. Yeah, and I actually really like the move c4 because it kicks that queen away. Yeah. And now d5 is more <coughs> difficult for black to play, although you can... Yeah, can. It, it should be pointed out because it's instructive that part of the reason why white didn't play knight f5 before c4 is because the e pawn was pinned, uh, perhaps, to the queen on e2. So, so that was an idea to watch out for. Okay, when is the sack coming? Because knight g7 doesn't work yet. Knight g7, king g7, and you don't have a follow-up. But you know, keep an eye on that sacrifice for sure. So bishop f4, not what I was expecting. But probably still quite decent. Yeah, now there's threats of f6. Watch out for that. Undermining the king side structure. Is it strong enough to force black to play f6? Because that would be light score problems. No, bishop d4 defends it. That's nice. In fact, that, that's a strong move. I didn't see coming. It also hits b2. And c5 now. Very nice. That was a that was a nice little maneuver there from Vidit. Yep. And talk about improving your Pieces. You could have played yep. c5 with your bishop on a7, but of course... Well, that would have yeah, had the opposite effect. So, so now b2 is hanging. d5 is a, a point of emphasis because the black queen needs to stay protecting it. Yeah, but, okay, and you're not queen... really threatening to take b2 as long as c5 is hanging. So um... C5 is the more valuable pawn for sure because it opens the file for the rook. And um, you know b2, okay, that's just well, sitting there. What is there. he threatening with queen g3 that makes me not play rook e2? Okay. Knight of six. So wait, bishop d6 now? Isn't bishop d6 pick up the c5 on? Bishop d6, knight takes g4, would force h takes g4. I can't take on f8 there? I just, I thought maybe there'd be... 
dangerous on the dark squares, but you're spying the G7 pawn. You're right. In the end of that line, there's mates over here. Yeah, and also the C5 pawn. I can bring my rook back. I mean, my bishop back to take it. But maybe knight G4, bishop of eight, knight E3. <coughs> I'm, worried about, I'm worried about F6 there. Just sort of like confusion everywhere. So, but yeah, bishop, knight G4, bishop F8, uh, knight E3, F6. Looks. So he's going to play it. Okay, bishop takes F8, and that's what we said. Is there's a there's an X-ray? Whoa! On the, ooh, don't like this move, rookie three. Rookie three is super strong, and now you better watch out that the queen doesn't come to H4, and and the tables have turned. Yeah, this is not looking very good. Rookie three actually, there's n there's no way that that Zavin saw rookie three coming here because backing up to our analysis board, why didn't he do the move that you suggested with bishop takes F8? I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? G7 isn't under fire. There was knight e3 in those lines because the bishop is on g7 from d4. But then, F, then f6 is what I was thinking, so I'm not sure. Ah, f6, and maybe it's totally wild. Okay. Okay, well, either way, now black is getting getting counterplay, although it's going to be an exciting fish, finish. Neither player with much time left on the clock. Oh, g5. I, I assume that black's attack would come first, but I... I don't even see how this happened. He, so he went for the pawn. So he took on d3, and then, okay, that's probably a good decision by Zavin. Very good practical choice. And also just might be good, because look at black's king. So if g takes h6, oh, gosh. So bishop f6 here. If I'm trying to sacrifice bishop f6. Whoa! Queen g8. Can he get away with this? That is a move you never want to play. Yeah, but there's no threats for white. So you're, you're, missing, you're missing a piece to sack on h6. So g6 check. You take, take on the g6. Pawn. You can also take with the king, actually. King might even be better. The reason why I didn't want to take with the pawn was f7. And uh -huh. I thought that I was going to get, it was going to be a bit of a nuisance without a pawn coming down. But I could even okay. just play queen f8 there. I'm, I'm, I just don't see the uh the concrete play for white and now we're going to see a time scramble yeah there, but there's this there are is, problems here you're always afraid of getting mated if you're white because this bishop spying the g1 square well i'm now <laughs> just worried about the c pawn as well because the bishop will cover yeah. the long diagonal the pawn's not moving anywhere so bishop d4 back or bishop f6 even uh -huh. better this one check my king go to h7 safe oh king h7 rook f8 king of five I, ooh, I thought he would play king of five there uh is he gonna settle Wait, on a draw so again can he he can allow the rook to take on. Why not? F7. Yeah, why not? Uh, he could have. He could have just played c3. This is just really interesting that Vidit doesn't have the confidence in his time scramble skills to to keep pushing those positions. And if he doesn't win this match, there's no way we can't look back at this. I mean, once again, how is Black not playing for the win there? Should have been. Definitely should have been. It there were like... two options. There was what you said. There was there was the c3 move. And if rook takes f7, king g6, right? You defend with tempo, and the c pawn runs. There was there was also playing king f5 on rook g8 check, and 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 deciding whether you could roll the dice that way. So yeah. Wow. Wow. The uh, another peaceful result, despite what we thought was was going to be going to be a decisive finish. So so okay, I like surprises. Yeah, no. I mean, this has been this has been a great matchup this far. I'm, I'm yeah. pretty pumped because, um, you know, going into it, I wasn't convinced about Vidit's bullet. I mean, I'm not convinced. I just didn't know. Yep. And for Zavin, I was like, okay, he's very good against Title Tuesdays, and no disrespect meant to the Title Tuesday format, but of course, in those open, in those Swisses, you end up going up and down, and you're yep. not playing game after game at 2700. So um, I, I'm very impressed by his ability to stick with Vidit every single game. That said, uh, it's been pretty clear to me that Vidit has kind of had, had the upper hand and that, you know, I think the score does not reflect the gameplay. I really think that um, Vidit, you know, should be leading this match by uh, at least a point, maybe two. And I, I, Daniel, another thing I wonder, as I'm thinking aloud here, is if the fact that Vidit is playing in India and it's what, let me think about this. Times in India, is it midnight it's, now? Past the night? It's a. It's no. I think it's. 
I think it's 11. 11.30. Yeah, 11.30. 11.35, yeah. So he's playing nearly midnight and yep. it's a little bit earlier in the evening for Zavin. So I wonder if that's you know potentially catching up to him. Not that he would yep. ever make excuses, but it is something worth considering because chess players don't usually play for three hours. Uh, no, but I think, it, I think it's more along the lines of either match strategy, which we got to quiz him about, or as it's as it's kind of being speculated right now in the chat rooms, is Liam Chez one two in Twitch, wondering if he's just nervous, um, new to the format. Uh, Duno two three one claims that Vidit was also someone who didn't really press his advantages in the Pro Chess League. I can't really speak to that, but I do actually seem to remember commentating on a game where we felt that Vidit uh, gave his opponent a, a draw too early. So, anyway, interesting stuff. Obviously, we'll talk to him a little bit about it after the match. So that makes for some interesting interviews. For those of you just joining us, make sure you stick around for the entire thing, um, or I will find you. And uh, <laughs> and okay, so either way, we have a deadlock match, and you know, again, we're in a situation where look at the position. White feels in complete control, super dominant space advantage, up a minute and almost 30 seconds on the clock. Um, but I feel like we've been here before, and, and it's forbidden to prove he's going to convert on these advantages. Yep, and look at this bishop on b7, Danny. Not a piece you really like to see. Very passive. It's stuck defending the c6 pawn, yep. whereas white bishops are more versatile, right? The bishop on e5 hits g7, also keeps the rook from b8. The bishop on e4 hits c6, also aims at the king side you know, via the h7 square, for example. So, um, and look at the time situation, actually. Yeah, no, the time situation is really killer. I actually really like this move, bishop e4, even if it just falls back to b1 to open up the battery. Okay, this is this is really the tough spot you're in when you when you have such a space disadvantage. Um, you know, white is poking at weaknesses on both sides of the board. I think white can be patient here. Moves like rook f to e1, followed by bringing the rook up to maybe even e3 and g3. Obviously, bishop c2 is going to be in constant threat of moves like queen over to e4. So it's crazy. I hate that bishop on b7, Dan. It's just really bugging me. Yeah. Let it go, buddy. It's not your bishop. It's not your bishop. Interesting decision to take with the b pawn there. I mean, it makes sense. Because yeah. if you're saying the b4 pawn is, is solid, because f6 always hangs the e6 pawn. Yep. So, h4. No, but you're right. It does leave white with this potential weakness on d4 where you could have just ridden yourself of it. Um, okay, but I like h4, h5. He's uh, look at this look at this improvement there by Zavin. Credit where credits due. A nice positional timing to get that piece. Oh, I spoke too soon. Blundered upon. <laughs> I was kidding. You barely passed that test. F plus. Yeah, that was an important pawn too. Yeah, that was an important pawn, and now E six is falling. Um, in a lot of positions. C seven here. Well, maybe you don't push the pawn. Okay, he does it. I would say maybe you don't push it yet, but. But a seven's falling if you if you're into if you're into more than one, you know. Rook c one was a good move there because rook c one if take on c seven take bishop f five was oh no it didn't work. Oh, no, it didn't work. It didn't work the queen could take. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but still, you're up the exchange. There's there's relative weaknesses on the light squares. Should be straightforward for white. Maybe bring the queen to e six, targeting yeah, like the d pawn. Yep, he goes for it. There's also threats of rook to b5 and rook to e5 to make sure you win the pawn. Now, now I think just g3. Yeah. Okay, a tough game here for Zavin. Um, and uh, despite our criticisms of Vidit missing several opportunities, he seems to be in the driver's seat right now with less than 30 minutes on the three-minute clock. We transition from this to bullets. So, um, time for Zavin. To oh, Ooh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, that was Love awesome. It. By Queen the way, G8, rookie six, game over. Queen G eight, rookie six. Is the done. point, everybody, is Queen takes B eight, failed to Queen takes F five, and uh, wow, a very, very nice little finish there from Vidit, and he has his first lead in the match. Yep, that's true. Is that I, I stuttered as I said it, but I love getting stats out before Stat Boy has a chance. Take that, Fun Master Mike. <laughs> you are right. And well, look, I mean, Vidit strategy paid off in that game. Yep. Squeeze, 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 and then you know, it it worked to perfection in that one. But in the other games, he wasn't converting. Yep. And you know, tried and true method. He's just going to continue doing the same exact thing 
making Zavin prove that he can hold. So uh, yep. that was impressive. Super impressive, V-Sim. Letting the, uh, letting the Vidit head out in the chat. He's kind of adorable looking in that emote. I know that's a rare thing to say about an emote, but it feels like his head is naturally that size. <laughs> that's funny. That's how cute it looks. Apparently, according to our fun statistician, Mike, this vidit is an ancient word of Sanskrit origin, which means information or informed. Vidit also refer, refers to understanding, representation, appraise, or inform. So he, the name vidit would mean like a sage or a learned, a learned person. So that, that's what Mike does when he's upset that I said a stat before he did. He has to go real deep and provide information. There's no way I could have come up with. Yeah, I mean, he really just went all out. Really, for it. just but, really just made me look bad. You know, some people believe in like zodiac signs and astrology and stuff like that. You're I only mean, saying name, that. You're only saying that because you're a Libra. His name, <laughs> whatever. And I'm not a Libra. <laughs> I know you're not. I was, I was messing with you. <laughs> his name actually is pretty fitting. You know, he plays. You know, his style of chess, his brand of chess, is uh, clearly like you know, he's he's kind of getting all the information out of the position in the sense right. of. He's, he's pushing all his pieces forward onto good squares, feeling his opponent's strategy out, and just taking away options. I mean, look at this position, for example. Uh, we see a sort of uh, Benoni-type kind of Structure setup. Structure for white with this D3 pawn being weak, yeah. Yeah, and the knight on C2, out of options. Um, okay, if you go A4 for black, now white can go knight B4. And he that might probably should. Get that pony out while you can, while the getting's good, because you yep. can get to D5. No, I, I agree with you. You know, he does play. I, I, I'm critical of his lack of opportunities. Maybe he needs a little more passion, a little bit less scientifically informed decisions in some of the games here. But okay, he's up in the match, so hard to hard to criticize further than further than that. But okay, I, I actually like Zavin's position better than we first thought. Talking about a Benoni structure normally is something we we don't like, but here. I mean, if White can get the knight to d5... Knight d5 now just looks good. Knight d5 looks delicious. Um, it threatens c7. Yeah, he goes for it. I mean, c6, I bishop... is he just allowing knight to c7 and rook to e8? C7. Forks the... Knight c7 forks the e8 square and the rook on a8. Oh, that's even better. I was thinking bishop c7 wins the a5 knight, but the rook... I mean, knight c7 is clearly stronger. You might. I didn't even think about bishop c7 winning the knight. I, I was focused on my e-file tactic because... The positional point that was on the tip of my tongue is I kept wanting to say in these types of structures when there's only one open file, you know, that you, you have to be aware of all tactical roads that pass through it. Okay, and he doesn't go for it. I, I think knight c7 was, was better, but uh, we'll see. Maybe your move is, is better. No, I like it's like, it's like picking between fun. your two kids. You just don't want to say which one you love more. I have zero kids, so I can pick my hypotheticals very well. Um, you... Uh, I, I was going to say, for you, it's like picking between other things, but I'm not going to go there. Okay, I don't, I don't even want to know what you're going to say, but this looks pretty good. I mean, queen d7 here. So let's say you go queen d7. If you take on a5, I just take on d5. I don't think I'm too unhappy. Yeah, I think that's why bishop c7 was less good. I'm going to agree with you. And what else can you do? If, if queen d7, knight b6, first of all, you can just take on b6. But queen takes c7 there might also be good. So he was knight b3, but what about bishop d8? Bishop d8, knight d2, rook e8 check, king h7, and run out of fancy moves to say quickly. You are you are my favorite, Chess Bay, especially because my six-year-old daughter happens to be your spirit animal. So you're, you're basically tied with Hazel for life. So Wow, that's quite a compliment. Yeah. Hazel okay. knows who Chess Bay is because sometimes I'm sitting there working from home and Hazel's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just chatting with Chess Bay. Hazel. I can't wait to see Hazel. Anyway, back to the... You distracted me. You knew that would get me. Um, yeah, what what does White do now? I, I think Zavin is regretting regretting his decision because it's hard to find a knockout. Okay, he finds Queen F4. That's strong. Queen D7. Queen D7, and then how can you continue to take advantage of stuff? Okay, he goes Knight to B6. But isn't D3 hanging here? Yeah, there might have been tactics on, on E7 in some positions, like Knight E7, and the bishop hangs on F5 in some... Anyway, too late now. All right, focusing on the present. Um, bishop D3, is Bishop H3 a concern? 
Bishop d3, bishop h3. Oh, I like that. But still, I mean, you can play a move like h5 or f5 or something. Or even bring the bishop back to f5, maybe. True. c5. Wow. That's a shot out of nowhere. Maybe not. Maybe for bad reasons. I didn't expect it. Yeah, that looks suspicious. But maybe not bishop d5. Okay, it didn't do it. I thought, you know, getting yeah, trying to get that d5 attack. guarding c4 and hitting f7. I, I agree. That, that might have been the... The journeyman's way to play, but rookie seven's coming. Ooh, rookie seven. Did he miss that with f7? Rookie seven, queen f5, I guess he was a bit concerned. Ah, okay, he got it. Okay. And now rookie five, queen f6 would be played. So I feel like this like... game is going to end in some sort of ridiculous blunder, and I just don't yeah. know why, but everybody's hanging. Yeah, I, I like white's bishop on c3, that's for sure. Only 20 seconds or less for Vidit. Here comes the mate, queen queen e5 get, get the queen on the dark squares yeah knight, knight c5 was a very good move yeah because of the queen e5 you now have f6, f6 and the knight guards e6 very actually that was an excellent move yeah that was key in fact Zavin had to take a bunch of time to to find the right approach so far i'm liking what's going on from blacks i mean okay i like white I think white's just much better here though bishop pair weaknesses on both sides but black is defending i agree so now knight d3, rook d1, that doesn't look good. Well, knight d3, rook d1, bishop c4 hits the queen on. Yeah. Oh, things are getting complicated. He's going to lose the c5 pawn. Hey, why bishop b3? He should win bishop d5. Just trade off those bishops. Yeah, that would have been nice. Okay, this also is working. Bishop on f3 is very important. Can't just give that up. Can't give up the light squares. In fact, now so that's bishop... a dual threat because you're also threatening knight to d3. Is he going to get bishop it? G... Bishop g4 was an option there. He missed that opportunity. Uh... Now g4, yep, kick that queen. And queen of four, you can't I take like d3 because the rook was hanging. I like that a lot. Bishop d5, he found it. Bishop d5, and he gets out of everything. In fact, you couldn't, take, you couldn't take it because knight d2 was a fork, yeah. But it only has five seconds, though. But he's better. Knight takes c3. Oh, you could have taken knight c3. Yeah, knight takes c3, but he's still got... Okay, I was going to say he still has knight e2 at some point if he wants it. Knight take, take h5. Keep this king in a sort of weird mating net. Only five seconds. Good. Rook, rook G5. Check. Rook G2. And then Rook G4. Rook Do it. No, he takes oh. F4. Rook F1 check, King H2. The knight is sort of pinned. You almost G6. have to. G6. G6. Ah. He's, he's giving me nightmares here. He gets okay. out of it in a different way. With only three seconds, though, this is such a tricky position to play. Yep, there goes G7. Okay, he's okay, just but running. He still has hand. the H pawn, right? Rook G6 check, put a 1B. All he needed was one pawn at the end of all those lines, and he's got it. So rook g4 check. Now rook, rook g5. g5. Oh, but Only then he two seconds. Pawn. Okay, he gives up the pawn. And we've seen Vidit go in, in this type of route before where he settles on the peaceful result once he feels like the best parts of his advantage have slipped. And maybe that's all he's doing here. He's just sort of settling on the position. Really? If, I'm, but if, I, if I'm Zavin, I'm definitely playing. Yeah, I was going to say, he's been so afraid of playing these time scrambles. If I'm Zavin... Even though I mean, this is look at where this has gone from two pawns extra for black on the king side to if anything being worse on the queen side. Yep. Crazy. Is he gonna go? For, Wait. He could, oh. could he have taken on c7? Uh, could he have won in the king pawn ending? He's we're gonna. Okay, he's going for the rook and pawn ending, but that might be this easier is, to draw. Yeah, this doesn't look as good as the the other ending. Yeah, should just be a draw. The other ending was a draw, by the way. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm thinking yeah. it in my head. So that that wasn't winning. This is. You know, valid attempt, but king a5. Just keep the king on the fifth rank. Yeah. I thought we were going to see more decisive fireworks there with both sides living on the increment for the last 30 moves. But uh, but no, it looks sort of like we're headed for a peaceful and, result. I just looked at him, and he kind of shook his head in a little bit of frustration. So. Well, he should be frustrated. I mean, how did this game go from Wait, the position Rook, it Rook did? Two. Okay, I guess Rook 2 doesn't matter still. So. I mean, okay, this should still be a draw, but Vidit is getting himself in a position where where he has issues to worry about. Yep. Now, okay, if you go king before, you still lose the b-pawn. Same difference here. Yep. Yep, now king king moves forever. You, your king can't protect the b2-pawn, so it's always going to be just a draw. Yep. Okay. It's funny, the, the king could literally be on, like, g6, and the setup is good. From a time management perspective... Uh, this, this is really just eking time off the total clock, right? And we talk a lot about the different strategies of the speech chess championship in the sense of, um, you know, where do you feel you have your best chances to win? 
in that game, I think Zavin was just rightfully pushing on, given that Vidit seemed uncomfortable under time pressure, which is making me more and more nervous about the bullet portion and more and more, you know, potentially agreeing with uh, with our with our pregame stats that really, really predicted that the bullet portion would be one that favored Zavin. Um, so maybe even by more than I mean, Vidit has been so nervous under time scrambles in, in this match so far, Robert. Yeah, I, he has been, um, but he has never – has he blundered too terribly? I mean, he's made some clear mistakes, but Zobin's the one who hung a rook in that other game. So um, I, I can't recall any tremendous blunders from – But we've blunder. seen him – I mean, he was just up two pawns in that endgame. Yeah, that, 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 that wasn't ideal. The, the reason is we haven't seen him lose games yet, but I think we we could argue we've seen several half points given away with wins to draws. For sure, for sure. Um, the kind of modern Pierts sort of setup, typically not an opening you want to play against a 2700 player, but, and Zavin's not only playing a kind of an offbeat, risky opening at the highest level, but also spending a lot of time. So, not a good well, sight. I think, I think it's fair to say he's felt a little bit behind the eight ball in the first stage of the game, and, and Vidit has been better in most of the middle games we've seen, which means he probably either had the better opening or at least was more comfortable. So so maybe he's just poking and trying to find different holes in the Vidit shield. Wow, I like how you phrased that. Yeah? Yeah, that was holes in the Vidit shield. That just sounds very powerful. And you know, I like to come up with new ways to say the same thing. I approve. <laughs> but... It- you know, I mean, we're talking about this position, Danny, and I'm sure you've had experience in it. I, I used to play things like this from the black side. In fact, I do, when I play lower-rated players, I often try to play a kind of modern setup just yep. to get a position. But the downside is, let me just look at this. You can't castle kingside. Yep. don't want to castle queenside. And yep. queen g7 at some point can be very annoying, especially if you do castle queenside because f7 becomes weak. And um, if your king's going to get stuck in the center, well... Okay, kings just don't like being in the center. King e7 here connects the rooks, but then what's your next move? I just that's the problem. There's no clear plan, um, you know, for from Black's point of view. And yeah. I see uh, Georg Meyer in the chat saying that in general Zavin doesn't have openings. It's probably why, uh, and probably the main yeah. reason why he's so low rated. Well, that's class. excellent insight from somebody qualified to give it, right, Georg Meyer. North of, of 2,700 German Grandmaster is qualified to say, probably. And it makes you think that that's probably why Zavin is a talented player, very good at Blitz and Rapid, where there's less emphasis on high-level opening preparation. Um, but uh, in a match like this, where you're playing the same player over and over, it's different than a Title Tuesday. It's even different than a Pro Chess League, right? I mean, you're getting the same player who has more time to expose potentially dubious openings. Yep. I mean, Queen G7 here looks delicioso, Dora. <laughs> you love your Dora the Explorer. Rep- Wait, what just happened? Queen g7, king e7. Oh, he blundered a piece. Okay, he can go queen... shaking his head because he's like, what in the bleep did I do? He just played knight takes e5. Yeah, that was not the right way to do this. Yeah, he's frustrated. There was... So play, play rook... Oh, but you can castle king side now. I was going to say play rook d6 and play against the king on the center, but you can castle. We were talking about Gary Meyer's comment and just failed to realize or appreciate that knight takes e5 just didn't work. I, I immediately saw that it removed the defender, and so I assumed queen g7, but you were right. And uh, Vidit just gave away a, a, a clear advantage with this blunder of knight takes e5. Yeah. And, I, you know, I was focused on the Georg Meyer comment and saying, can someone who plays the French really make comments of someone else's openings? But I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first French insult of the day comes out. Well, you know, you know it, ha- it had to happen. So this position, well, we, we did see Vidit up a piece earlier, and now he's down a piece, but we saw him up a piece for two pawns, and he lost um, that game. So perhaps he's hoping that Zavin will return the favor. Something something kind of scary just happened after you made that comment about Georg Meyer. Somebody just came in my office, <laughs> and uh, he's preparing to, to take care of <laughs> some issues. So... Your, you don't have to resort to that level of violence. Put the put the gun away, Mr. Gruber. So be careful what you say about Mr. Meyer. Georg Gruber over there? Georg Gruber. 
or is it Hans Meyer? Which way are we going? I, I, I tend to prefer Hans Meyer, but um, the main thing is just how natural this looks. Shout out to one of uh, both of our one of our one of our better friends for both me and you, Mr. John Urschel, who made this gift for me. And yeah, that's uh, awesome. Hey, wait a second. White's trying to get an attack here. The game's not over. Wait, how many pawns? White has two pawns, so wait, we've wait. seen this. This is not our first rodeo here, Danny. Two wait, wait, I was going to say, we've seen Zavin win a game. Knight f5. Knight f5 right Knight f5 is just crushing. Yep, because you can't protect both d8 and f6. <laughs> well, no, knight f5 is queen f8, which does queen sort of protect. Queen f8 barely holds, but there's still... Crazy yeah, is... tactic, especially under time pressure. But I was just going to say, we saw Zavin, you know, have a game where he stayed in it despite blundering a piece out of the opening, and maybe uh, Vidit's looking to return the favor. Yep. So rookie two, he didn't like knight f5. What did he not like about knight f5? Now there's now there's all kinds of weird. Is okay. There's no e5. But if e5, knight d5 trade, and then e6, you're almost simplifying enough to get some compensation. Yeah, King but not three. Quite. Wow. I love that move. This There's is... no knight discovery checks for black, and now knight f5 comes in uh, in full force. Please. Yeah, but you may get yourself mated in the process. That's fine. I don't mind getting checkmated. Yeah. e5, queen c3 check. I have rook e3. So maybe I'm not getting mated quite yet. Well, Vid is going to be in the situation he's been trying to avoid. A game that he has to play under time pressure, whether he likes it or not. There's going to be, there's no draw, draw out of this one. Well, watch there be some sort of repetition. Yeah, he... right as I say it. Chess karma. The chess karma is real. God's always looking to prove me wrong. The chess gods. Here comes h5. So h5 is our knight. What is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Who's talking? <laughs> I think it's Ruslan, Mr. P Grandmaster Ponomaryov. That's right. Mr. Ponomaryov keeps unmuting himself. If you're interested in covering and watching uh, Ponomaryov yeah. cover this in Russian, you can go for it. I just muted him, though. And I just missed the end of that game, but it was going to be a queen sacrifice to win the queen back. So. That was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was trying okay. to figure out what, who I was hearing. Well, the impossible didn't happen. Vidit doesn't return the favor, blunders a piece, and lives to regret it. So so we're back to a tied match. And uh, I don't know about you, but that gets me excited. Yep. No, I'm ready for this one to eventually get down the bullet because uh, you know, the, game, the match is going to have to be decided somewhere. Also, I see Georg Meyer said, I don't believe in the French. How is this possible? The guy, the guy plays the French his No, but whole he, career. he told me he's trying to get out of it. It's a, oh, okay. it's a bad relationship you get out. It's like when you're in an abusive relationship, but you've left your CDs in their truck. You can't just end it. you got to go get your CDs first. Yeah, it's a little bit of an addiction, I guess. Yeah. Um, that yeah. was ridiculous. So, <laughs> we, I mean, I'm, I'm coming from all angles. I have Georg telling me he doesn't like the French. I have Ruslan Ponomaryov speaking Russian, or I think, in the back of uh, the background. And now we have a game on our hands between Vidit with the black pieces and Zavin with white. And so unlike the previous games where white has gone ahead and taken a knight on c6, here all four minor pieces are still on the board. Yep. And, um, and it's, a, it's a lot of fun. And I, uh, looking at the, at the odds to win the match, along with our big stats showing the scoreboard progression, we are, we're in for a dogfight given the prediction of where this is going. So pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, right now there's, you know, the pressure on the center is really not so much. Right? The bishop on c2 covers e4 very well. Um, the rook on e8 isn't quite there yet to be able to play e takes d4. Right? You want to play e takes d4 if you're going to be able to uh, really hit the e4 pawn, but it's not happening. And so knight g3, keeping a solid center. You don't want to commit too soon. If you play, and that is not about, you know, early stages relationships. If you play d5, for white, then you make sure the center is permanently closed, which can be a great thing if you can start perhaps attacking on the king side, but can also be bad because white, excuse me, black has an opportunity to push on the queen side. So instead of allowing d5 to happen at all, Vidit plays bishop c4, saying, well, d5 has no real purpose now. Uh, you do trade the bishops, the dark square bishop, but I have my light square bishop on an improved square. And um, Did you just slip in like an early relationship reference joke? I did. And I totally, it, it, 
it took so long to sink in. I apologize for that. But I, can I just say I don't know if I've ever been more proud of you. I figured you would be because you're the one who always makes relationship jokes at my expense. So I figured I might as well just do it. Uh, Gold member Jeremiah Bibble says, well, who is Georg Meyer? Great player from Germany. That's right. You guys better know who they are, who he is in the Chess TV chat. When you said gold member, I really thought you were doing an Austin Powers reference. Which would have been great, right? Or a, or a 007 Goldfinger. But, uh, all right. Well, um, who's better here? This is the first 3-0 game where we've really seen um, Vidit be the one under time pressure. Perhaps he's struggling a little bit to shake off the the blunder and the and the horrible game he had last game, right? I mean, it, the the hangover is real, right? When when you're playing this type of match and have to quickly move from one to the other, I think it's probably fair to say he's a little emotionally frustrated right now. Thanks, Absolute Furry, for the seventh month in a row subification. So Bishop takes D four. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I was wondering. Yeah, how well, he chose. I, I like Zavin's position. I like B five as weak. I, uh, okay, I guess my e4 pawn's a bit of a target. Yeah, and the good news for black is you have this f4 square for your knight, which even if it doesn't do too much, it's just a bit of a nuisance. So um, if you played bishop c4 here for white, I probably have to take with my queen because, well, now I can take with my knight if, if you take. But the question is as well, if pawn takes c4 instead of knight c4, is it worth giving up his a4 pawn to get my knight to d3? Yeah. And... I think most people would be very reluctant to just give away that pawn. Not my pieces, so I'm happy to give it away. But um, I mispronounced your name on purpose, all right? Uh, never mind, sorry. I, stop focusing on the Twitch chat, Robert. What? Did, what? I, I was projecting. All right. Okay, um, gotcha. Because I was like, I'm, I'm talking over about to the D, D file. White's still better. But yeah, like you said, I mean, long term, B2 is. Really, the biggest weakness on the board, even more than d6. So wasn't e4? I mean, e4 hanging a second ago. Knight takes f. Oh, you probably throw a knight h6 check. I was thinking, could uh, I play knight takes e4 because f5 was hanging? But, yeah, but um, you, in, in or mm Hmm. So if you're vitted here, do you try to play for a3, or do you just? I think you leave that pawn structure as it is. Uh, I, I the reason why a3 could be good is to just start undermining the c3 pawn. I know it's just so hard to want to let white off the hook with such a weakness here forever knight h5 now oh, actually i don't know but knight h5 is rook d5 so he just moves his yeah he's he's uh he's willing to play tickle he's proven that already both on and off the chessboard <laughs> well i wouldn't know about the off the board stuff but uh, i'll take your word for it so was white really trying to go f4 i don't think so so i, I don't know if the queen was was necessary to move it oh i guess rook no, rook d5 doesn't trap the queen either. So but I think I you're right, though. I think he, uh, he he saw that knight h5 wasn't as big of a threat because of rook d5. Ooh! He, now he's going to allow knight takes h6. What does he see this time? That he can take with the rook? And I guess yes. he's okay with it. Well, no. Knight h6 pawn takes and e4 is protected. So e4 is just ah, a free just pawn. Over, yeah, it was just a free pawn. Oh, my gosh. Because the queen's no longer on c2, which is an important difference. I see you, vast luck, And I see uh, people. You're getting some love in the chess TV chat, Robert. Really, I don't, I don't know if I deserve it, but thank Knight you, take, Babush X. Look at this. Knight takes e4, just one a pawn straight up. I feel like we just took for granted that 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 was an issue. Okay, so this looks pretty appetizing from Black's point of view. So let's see. Do I play rookie one check and trade a pair of rooks? Do I start with h5, trying to kick that knight? No, h5. You're, you're really not getting any progress. I like, I like this move, rookie five. Even just play rook g5. Okay, no, he's. He wants to keep the, the pressure on the B-file. And notice, as much as the queen has had fun kind of poke, poking at these diagonals, the queen can never move without B2 falling. Zavin's going to go for it, but but uh, now now you're immediately back to wondering about B2. And I... Well, B2 is now for sure. I was going to say, I like I like it. Well, I'm not sure why Vidit isn't capturing on B2. There, there he goes. So he threw an F5 first. A3 okay. with the threat of A2. Rookie one is oh no not rookie one because f five hangs at the end but I was trying to say oh I can go rookie one and trade off those rooks then my eight pawns too strong. Here comes the knight back to c four though that was actually very a very technical a very informative way to play the position Vidit proving and living up to to his Sanskrit origins. Just King very G6. very this is just super disciplined approach by Black here. 
I like it. I'm worried about his time, though. I, I agree, but I'm saying F3, I mean, F3. F3 is just super strong. You can't take everyone because knight g4 check wins the queen on the spot. Yep, or queen takes h5 as a free piece, and there's queen h5. Should be game over, but with no time, either side could blunder here or living on the increment under 10 seconds. Knight g4 check. Knight g4 check, oh, wait, and then queen h3. What? It was rook on b4. Ah, didn't see it. Okay, yeah, we both blundered it. Okay, knight, knight c4 to make the trade. Now he's coming back to this knight g4 idea, if I had to guess. Guards h8. Knight g6, he's going to protect everything. Queen uh -oh. g8's mate, though. Yep, watch out. Watch out for mate, as they say. A2. Uh, the knight, the knight covers h8. Such an irritating thing to have to deal with when you're trying to be on the grind over here to mate town. Yep, queen e2 to f1 is good enough for a win. Queen e2 to f1 should be mate on the light squares. And, queen f1. Uh, and here there it, comes. it is. Wow. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow. The computer draw. Zavin, Zavin attempts one last swindle. Vidit strikes back. Title of your autobiography. And, uh, and wow. Um, wow, Robert, that, that was a super exciting game. And I'm excited we're going to get one more three-minute battle before moving on to Bullet. Because at this point, every game in this match is, is making my day. Yeah, and Danny, I just got an interesting stat, and it was not from my client, but it was from you. You can guess who is our staff from? I, I, don't it's, make me use my brain right now. It's his smarter chess. Okay. Yeah. And he says, "Fun fact: We have never had a tied match at the end of the three-one segment, dating back the last two seasons of the GM Blitz Battles and the Speed Chess Championship in this season. So since its inception." There has not been a tied match at the end of the 3-1 segment. That's wow. crazy. Since the speech has championship inception, does that include year one? Yes, that's what he wow. told me. Smarter chess going deep, giving Mike Klein a run for his money. <laughs> Too smart. So that means if we see Zobin win here, we're making history as we head into the bullet in a deadlocked affair. All 2,000 of you that are with us, thanks for being here. Where are your friends? Tell them to stop playing Fortnite and do something for their brain. Watch a little chess. Yep. And all right. So in this position, we see another knight orc. And let's see. The d5 square firmly under white's control. Black can capture on g3. Notice that you tend to want to play h takes g3, f takes g3, mm -hmm. pushing a white pawn away from the center. However, in this current structure, it opens up the F file for the rook, mm -hmm. which means the knight has to move away from the F6 square. It doesn't have to, but it probably Yeah, I mean, should. I was going to say you probably should. The doubled F pawns would really be bad, but, uh, but I think you can move it away. The, my big worry becomes the D6 pawn, right? D7, is it met by rook D1? At least that's the move I would play pretty quickly. Yeah, There you, might be I, F6, king E7. I think, I think there spot. has to be F6 and king E7. Only way to defend it. And that's why um, Zavin played... Queen e6 before taking on g3 is because the knight wouldn't have been able to move with the queen on e7. So essentially, yep. uh, won a important tempo there. So what's going on here? Isn't b6 hanging next? This looks terrible for black. Ziggermorph Diamond member says he really loves the marriage. I think we're working out our marital issues on camera all the time, setting an example, right? Um, but uh, Mike, Mike also coming through after Smarter Chess points out we've never had a tied match heading into Bullet. But he's so, wrong. So don't quote him. Don't do it. He's. We've never. Okay, he is wrong. You know what? I know the match. It was Grisha Karonian. Oh no no! It was Geary So. Yep. So Geary So is Geary So is the only ever overtime speech chess championship match ever from last year. And I knew you were going about to go quote him, and I tried to try to help you out, try to save you. Yeah. So what's going on? Okay, it's four on four, knight versus bishop. Wait, that knight's sort of trapped. On a4. I guess it can go back to c5 or take on b2, depending on what white does here. But rook c6 to trap that knight. If knight takes b2, he'll probably play rook b1. Yeah, white is like uh, a tempo away from getting some devastating pressure with the rooks. Yeah, that knight's actually just really just about to get trapped because if you play f6, White can consider just playing bishop c1, protecting yep. the b2 pawn, threatening b3. You can even play b3 right away, saying if you take on g5, I take on a4. Your pawn structure is terrible. Uh, I'm in a superior endgame. But bishop c1 here. Bishop c1 threatens b3, and how do you stop it? I mean, 
there, there yeah, is a move like King D7 gaining a tempo on the rook, but... Oh, that's a very good move. Th that's actually probably the... But then, but then Rook C4, Knight B6, Rook D1 check. Oh, and nice. Bishop C1, King D7, Rook C4, Knight B6, Rook D1 check, and then the Rooks will get jiggy with it. Yeah, that's looking terrible for Black. I would play that. I mean, you can play B3, but what I'm concerned about, B3, F takes G5, B takes A4, and yeah, Black's pawn structure is really bad, but all it takes is one black rook this you know getting active. So it plays bishop e3 to actually just trap this knight. But wait, the knight's not trapped at all now. Knight b2. Hey, what did he just do? Knight b2, rook b4. Oh, but then yeah, rook, rook b8. b8. He's got oh, he doesn't even have rook d1 check. What is he doing? Vidit's <laughs> Vidit's leaning back. Is he doing the rock away? Well, for the wrong reasons. So rook g4 might be, yeah, I knew he's going to, after you miss rook b8, you're playing rook g4 to hit that g7 pawn. And if you go g5, I take on f6. So that's actually an important tempo gaining move. You might play a move like rook h to g8, trying to meet rook b1 with rook a to b8 and saying, okay, my rooks are protecting each other. Then bishop c1 traps mm -hmm. them. Oh, then you have knight d1. Oh, that then, would be so funny. The knight is just surviving on the scraps of the squares that the rooks and bishop Rooks and bishops give it, but um, but but so far making it work. That's a nice move. I actually like the idea of giving up the pawn with check for counterplay. I think it's the right practical approach. Uh, now you're forever no longer worried about the knight. If moves like rook f2 come, you have knight d1. In fact, in fact, this looks really tricky for white to deal with. The rook on the h file seems ideally placed all of a sudden after the move like rook takes c2 check comes. Yep. Um. Yeah, this is this is suddenly flipping a script, and I think we may have the historical uh, thing we foreshadowed. If Zabin wins here, we have our first ever match tied going into bullets, so don't go anywhere, everyone. After a quick break, we will have a half an hour of the fastest chess around bullet. Wow, so what's going on in this ending? C2, is that's a big pawn to potentially lose, and... Yeah. Is that a second rank? Because I'm going to put my rook on it. Here we go. <laughs> 91, 91. 91 just wins. If rook takes c2, knight takes c3, four key mode. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out, everybody. The four key mode. Heard around the world. Vidit hasn't resigned yet, but he will. And we just got a $25 donation from Dark Knight Chessbra. Who is Dark Knight Chessbra? I don't even know, but... It's the hero we need, not the one we deserve. <laughs> LOL. Hashtag Christian Bale. Where are you now? Um, <laughs> look at him trying to get a draw. He may actually be able to get it if he moves the bishop and sacks the exchange. That's his last chance. How about rook d2 check? No, then you have king e4. But rook, rook d2, d2 check, check is king hilarious. E4. You know, rook a4 check. You can't take on e2. King takes e3, then rook takes c2, and there's no fork. Yes. The king takes away his own square. Rook d2, king e4, rook check, and white wins. So wait, why did he do this? He missed it. He just didn't see that. There's no way he, he just didn't see Rook D2, dude. Crazy. Crazy talk. Under time so, pressure. One board to rule them all. One board to find them. Here comes F4 to win them all. Oh, oh. F takes G3. First Harry Potter reference for all those LTR, LOTR fans. <laughs> LOL. All right, King G4. I like it. But okay, no. Zavin wins, and we were tied, headed into bullet. Wow, Excited. that was. I did. I mean, White should have won that game. I mean, after that knight was on a four, if you give that position yeah. a bit again, well, I think he... you had the most straightforward plan. I think this bishop c one plan was the best for sure. Yeah, I think he under he forgot that this rook d one checks like he saw it, but just yep. in the wrong order. All right, so he's trying his best to survive this rook f four check. Looks pretty good. G two yep. should be over. That's not true, Dark Knight. Rook G3 not true. Track. Thank you so much for the love the, to these players. Yeah, didn't we just give Dark Knight a shout out? I don't know. I think it's an inside joke somehow. I'm usually not part of those. All right, checkmate, the old fashioned wow. way. And we have a tied match headed into the bullet portion, which, if the stats and predictions mean anything to you, they are very, very close. Uh, other than the fact that it was the opposite as far as Zavin, Zavin taking uh, the five minute by one game and then the opposite happening in three minute. Um, although I guess no. No, I guess uh, it was slightly different. But the point is we have a tied match. 
headed yep. into Bullet. It's uh, anyone's match at this point. Don't go anywhere. Take your last quick 60 to 90 second break. Use the uh, use the room. Refresh the snacks, and we'll be right back. They're both still gone, but that doesn't stop you and I from coming back. It's about time we got some alone time on camera. Don't you agree? <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, I don't disagree. I can't say I do. You know, what I did just do while we were on break, though, is I got some messages and photos from my brother. And as I mentioned really early in the show, he's at the U.S. Open, and Roger Federer is about to take court. So I'm pretty jealous of him. He's and jealous because he loves watching these streams. He's though. jealous because you're being, you're being paid a visit from the one and only <laughs> Artok Manukian. <laughs> manager of the Armenia Eagles, the reigning pro chess league champions, and uh, clearly cheering on his boy, hoping for a good bullet portion. <laughs> Our talk tends to bring the magic wherever he goes. So if I was if I was around him, I'd probably rub his head for good luck too. You know? Yeah, I mean, Our talk is is a magician, and yeah. he brought so much team spirit to San Francisco for the live pro chess league esports type event. And so, um, you know, it was. It was really cool. And I got to give a shout out to my sister who just t messaged me saying, you know, essentially when my brother Peter will, might be at the, uh, the U.S. Open, she's watching. Don't I get a shout out? Here's your shout out, Alex. So. There you go. We should give a shout out to our, that our last donation that came from uh, Dark Knight Chess Bra. Giving love to his, his chess bras and chess bay. He says, this donation is in honor of chess bay. She is the best. That's just truth. Try, please try to get Eric on commentary for some speed chess matches, too. You know, there's a lot of great commentators and only so many matches. Eric and I will have the call for the Pro Chess League um, for the Pro Chess League All-Star Game coming up September 8th at 9 a.m. Pacific. So uh, that's going to be super exciting. Robert will be taking a, taking a break that weekend, and uh, Eric and I will have the call. Hard to say which division should be favored, but... If you like Pro Chess League and you like team events, this is pretty much everything you would ever want that maybe is missing from that format with all the strongest players playing on the same team. Um, and uh, that's what the All-Star Game, which will now be an annual thing, is all about. So the players are back. We are back. If you're just joining us, where have you been? Andreasian versus Gujarati. This is the Speed Chess Championship. We have the first ever match that is tied, headed into bullet, and uh, and that, I'm not kidding. Take note of what I just said. So if that's a sign of anything to come, I think we should be uh, we should be getting set for a photo finish here. So here we go. Bullet is underway. And we see Vidit with another solid setup with the black pieces. Of course, this is Zavin's choice. He's played for uh, well, he played Karo Khan. So we haven't seen the Karo Khan since the first game, and that was presented to us by our stat stat man Mike Klein. And, um, you know, I just also see another comment here by Smart Chess. A reason that tie stat is so important is no one has ever come back from behind when down after the end of the three minute segment. So, them being tied, no one has a deficit. So, and that means we're, we're in for history either way. Somebody is, well, no, I guess nobody's going to come from behind because there is no coming from behind here. Yeah. So. Well, they can, I guess, if they, you know, lose the first game and then come back. But, um, this is, for, from th my point of view here, um, talking about specifically with the board at play right now, I love Black's position. Pawn on d3 is a backward pawn and a weakness. Knight comes to c5 and just parks itself there. Yep. And this knight on h4, okay, you want to play f4. For white, you can't get it in. You're nice retreating backward. So everything looking good for black here. White lacks space, whereas black is uh, very happy to play rook b8 to beat pawn b5 and take with the rook on b5. And the reason why you take with the rook is that you eventually play rook b3, bishop a6, and down goes d3. So he, he's doing it this way. He'll play b5 no matter what, but I, I do like what's happened here. And there it goes. Yeah, he's preparing it a little more slowly. It makes you think that white might risk b4. Shout D3's out to Timothy. Oh, Ooh, we just blundered d3. Owie. Shout out to Timothy Connolly. Thank you for the donation to bring us to an even $100 donated today by the Twitch community. A little extra cash for our grandmasters who deserve it. Uh, this is this is so exciting to have a match this close. Um, he does get before. The issue with that, everybody, is that it was needed to stop, okay, or at least equalize counterplay. It didn't stop B5. The problem is that it, it was really done out of desperation because White lost the D3 pawn, and with it is now losing. Honestly, just gonna. I think he's just going to resign. So there you go. And look at that. Dark Knight oh. Chessbra coming back with another $25 donation. That prize fund hype is real. 
and it's it's uh, it's growing. We'll, we'll try to get your message in Streamlabs and read them out. Thank you to everyone who donates. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. And I want to give a shout out to Sharman Akil. It says, Vidit and I work in the same organization. He got a job in India's largest oil major due to his chess heroics. So clearly some big fans of Vidit. His compatriots love him. And in this position, well, I don't think Zavin loves him because look at those C pawns. There are two of them there, and they're both past the D pawn rolling through as well. A7 about to fall. Don't take yet because E6 is hanging with check. But after Bishop F7, now Rook takes A7 next, and this is uh, game over. Wow. Just C2, D3, anything really does the trick. Or Queen A4, D1, Rook is hanging. Dark Knight in the last donation said, Thank you, Danny. You are a nice guy. I feel like that was the nicest thing anyone's ever said, or I should read into it as like a I am girl from Egypt. Like he's saying something different than what he's saying. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, Black has is, Black is really put on a show here in the first bullet game here. This is this is a bad sign for, for Mr. Andreasian, but uh, okay, the bullet portion is young. Still have plenty of time to go. I mean, wow, that, those are, that's a lot. That's, I don't know how many pass pawns you need, but... Um, how many licks does it take to get queen, to the center? You, queen F1, Bishop C4 check. That's what I would do and just end the game. Okay, Queen G4, of course, okay, is good. Okay, does enough. it as well. And the answer is nine. Nine licks? Yeah. He gets C8, but still, there's just too many queens. Too many <laughs> queens. Okay, he, he finally throws in the towel. Um, at that point, I don't know if that was... I guess he gave it the last amount of tricks that he could. I don't know that that's the best strategy. If you're losing a bullet game, you want to get to the next game in this in this format. Because remember, everybody, we have this this running total game clock, which adds an element not normally there in, in just classical chess matches. So you're racing against two opponents here if you're if you're the one down in the match. Yeah, and actually, I, I was going to say, Danny, psychologically, they may be forgetting about the game clock because they've been tied the whole match. Yep. That it might not have come into play. Like, if you are up four games, you say, let me just run out, lose on time rather than lose on the board because that gets the match closer to being over. So, um, you know, it's it's very interesting to see how this will impact the rest of the And on that note, I was just making sure our team is continuing to notify them after the result of every game what the score is in the match and how much time is left. I think it's pretty obvious to them what the score is. They see that number right next to their avatar right there, the grudge score, as we call it. But always want to make sure they have all the information they need to make the best, most informed decision. So. And speaking of best uh, informed decision, Glenny1010 says, I'm watching this in school. So uh, the education paying off, hopefully, right here in, from school. But uh, speaking of school, we'll see if this, this end game looks old school, except for the fact that black is up a piece. How did that happen? I looked away from the... The game for a second and isn't wait what now black is up a, what just happened i mean everything uh, went <laughs> no i don't i don't even know what to say about that so i'm gonna pretend i understood what happened there and yeah we're back to a tied match before we can say boo and uh this one is just going to be crazy down the stretch i what did, how did vidit blunder a piece on that I don't know. I, I turned my head to the chat for a second, and all of a sudden... Um... And, and I was turning my head to mention, because you were saying about the fans, and we'll keep the game on the board so that nobody needs to be upset. We see what's going on. But remind your last chance to get involved in the one-year Diamond membership giveaway. Use the hashtag SpeedChess. We've seen some fun ones. We've seen a, a baby watching. I don't, I don't even know what that looks like, but it's funny. We see a penguin. That's actually really ironically funny to just put a penguin in someone's living room. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Uh, what else do we have? Looking for some other photoshops. Uh, I'm looking at the battery of the bishop on c7 and queen on d6, but I, I am also enjoying uh, <laughs> those photoshops. They're really funny. Um, yeah, here, so black is trying to get to h2, but it doesn't look like it's happening quite yet. Now knight g5 is possible, so watch out. Knight g5 gives black direct access to h2 square, and now all of a sudden, White's position is falling apart because you need to stop the queen from coming to h2, but there is no real way to do so. And knight takes f3, queen h2 is a direct mating attack. So it looks like um, Zavin moving quite quickly in this game. Getting himself uh, now, in trouble, yeah. Yeah, in trouble. And I'm getting challenges from people on chess.com. Please don't challenge me right now. I'm going to turn off those challenge settings. Yeah, but, that, uh, that's, it's never good when you have to give up two pieces for the rook with zero compensation. In fact, Black has the two pieces and the compensation, as they say. 
yep. here, I think. I was going to say maybe Queen G5 with Knight F4 was good, but this actually looks even better. Just uh, yeah, go just win the F2 pawn answer. because why not? You can't take D5 because Bishop C6. Yep. So. Okay. And this is super winning. But just given the pattern of the match, I guess if Vidit wins this game, we know who's going to win the next one. Um, <laughs> it's just been crazy. Yeah, they started with a two-game lead for um, for Zavin, and, and since the very then, beginning, yeah. And then since then, it's just been you know even one game lead for Zavin, even then that one game lead for Vidit. Yep. Now back to even, and that one game uh, now one ahead for Vidit. So um, very tight match here, and I, I like what Vidit's shown in the bullet thus far. I mean, I didn't know what to expect from him, but so far so good. And we Dark see. Knight Chessbra coming through again with the donation. I think that's a record for the first round of the SCC this year where we've added this element that the fans can donate the prizes. I think we'll get we'll get some prizes donated as the rounds get bigger throughout the event. But I think is 150 bucks the, the most we've had donated? I don't know. Someone will have to check on that. But. Might be, but and I and I really appreciate that. It just show, goes to show that you know, these players may not be super well known outside of the um, their countries and chess circles but they're putting up a great fight. This is actually some of the best chess yep. we've really seen in the speeches championship. So I'm, I'm going to keep that, uh, that little graphic of, of what these heads are doing to each other. If it's appropriate with you, um, we're back to a structure that you just have to favor Vidit. And again, this has been a bit of the story of the day. We, we've had a, a tone to our storyline that would suggest, uh, Gujarati being up by, by maybe two or three games at least. But, um, but okay, it's only a one-game lead. So despite the fact that uh, Vidit is is just better again out of the opening, although now now he's maybe giving some counterplay. Knight e1 will probably just okay. Knight d2. Shout out to Grandmaster Tigron Petrosian in the Chess.com TV chat. Says nice commentary, guys. We love it. Love wow, you. thank you. That's a huge compliment thank from you, a Tigron. Grandmaster. You know he's tuning in to uh, cheer on his countryman Andreasian. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's there in the background with our talk, you know, getting, getting being nervous and trying to celebrate his. Uh, Armenians teammates. do know how to throw a party. That is for sure. <laughs> Very true. And in well, throwing a party, look at that bishop on the d5 square. That yeah, bishop that's, is that's having a, a party nice in the piece. But how many pawns is blacked down? Two pawns. Okay, he, he didn't take on b2 because c8 was hanging. So, of course, they didn't want to give before rook. And what black really needs to do is sustain the pressure. Say, my bishop on d5. Yeah is the best piece. I'm hitting b3, I'm hitting g2. So now he can play rook c1. The problem is rook c1, rook c1, bishop b3, there's rook b1. Yep. That hitting bishop. at the so, end. And I think, I think Vidit has actually seen the worst of that bishop's potential here. He's managed to hold on to his two pawns in a healthy way. Here comes the knight and, into c5. Wait, but now bishop b3. Oh, bishop b3, rook b1, the queen takes a4. So I know then knight c5 at the end of that. So I guess he could not successfully capture yeah. on b3. If I'm black, I would... Uh, if I'm white, I just go get another pawn. Harry, oh, Harry's nice. gone too far. Oh, I didn't even see the fork coming. Emo yeah, blindsight. The big queen b4, take h4. Just Oh, d4 fails with check, though. Okay. Doesn't it really matter. But yeah, I but you got to be careful. You can easily yeah. throw these type of games away. Yeah, no, that was crazy. I'm going to play a5 first. Just don't give up that a pawn. Okay, he gives up the a pawn. You might even just sack the exchange back. Yeah, he decides yeah, to simplify matters. I, I like that, especially because of the potential threat of e6 at some point. So it's two pawns f extra for white. Oh, there and, oh this has got to be over now. If the queens come off the board, last tricks that black might have had against the white king are over, and we might be about to see our first two-game lead for Vidit. Remember, everyone, Andreasian had a two-game lead to start the day. Bishop h4. Okay, no, or not. Bishop g3 now. Yeah, we miss you, Tigron. You'll be back in the tournament. Another qualifier, another day. A5, A B4 defend yep and he's and you know he's actually very qualified to give his analysis and tigran in the chess com slash tv chat says zavin looks like in tilt a little bit otherwise he would have to you know yeah he, I would, guess he would have favored he would have favored zavin in the bullet but he feels like zavin isn't right i don't know i mean a lot of people in the twitch chat were saying that one of the things gujarati did to prepare for this match he's been playing a lot of bullet just go to his profile click on his username there everybody vidit chess and check out his profile, you'll see that he's played a lot of bullet this week to get ready for this match, and he was 160 points higher rated than Zavin coming in, um, coming into the day. So, so I don't know. A lot of people may disagree with that and say that Vidit just hasn't played as much bullet as Zavin. So, yeah, 
And we see another Karo Khan here. So Vidic going back to the Karo in the quick time controls. And Queen A5 check. I'll go to, I'm assuming we'll go to A6 at some point soon to offer an exchange. There it is. And okay, black often has a very solid foundation. Look at the pawn structure. Great pawn chain. You got the triangle going F7 to D5 to B7. But the problem for black is you, because uh, white has a more advanced pawn structure, your pieces are restricted. And yep. Zavin's doing everything correct so far. He's put all his pawns on squares that are protected and that are further restricting black's pieces. C5, another restriction. The problem is B6 and then overcomes F6. No, but it feels right. like white... Okay, yeah, F6 will be the, the next way to try to undermine it, but now... Okay, I'm taking that back. I was saying it feels like white space should be able to hold here, but here with the B file being grabbed by black... And it's one of those positions where black has less space, Robert, but all the pieces seem to be right where they need to be. They're on the B-file, the queen on these light square diagonals, the dark square bishop doing what it needs to do to go get the A5 pawn. So despite the lack of space, every piece is kind of on an ideal square for black. Yeah, and, the, and also this D4 pawn, it limits the dark square bishop for white as well. So it's not like only black's pieces are restricted. That dark square bishop is not very good for white. And at some point, black is the one who controls the pawn breaks. And that's very important, not just to this position, but to many. Queen a6 here for white would have been meant by queen a6, rook a6, knight b8, hitting the rook and protecting c6. Important to realize your ways to defend that c6 pawn. But yep. knight b3 is a very good move to go for knight a5. And here, okay, he's getting ready to protect in advance. And queen a6, nice way so he's not set up in passive defense. So watch out because if that queen moves, queen b7 is that's coming a, to queen. That's a trapped, a trapped dude on a8. So yeah. wait. Knight b7, isn't that a... Oh, look at that, knight, knight d8, there's queen f3, but queen b7 after that traps the rook. Yeah, but there's knight takes h4, threatening mate, and then maybe a perpetual. Oh, I like that. Or knight takes g3, even. That might even... And the c3 bishop's hanging. Wow, yeah, everything... now Zavin has to calculate all this. If he takes, in the end of this line, black is just busting it. Yeah, he decides it's not even worth it. Yeah, that's a good decision. And now bishop e7, knight d6. If you want to take me on d6, go for it. Um, Interesting. Rook a2. Knight d6, there it you is. You can take with the bishop and then play knight takes d4. Ooh, I forgot d4 was hanging, but I'm worried about queen b7 stuff. But knight d4, oh. if you took, black had queen e1 with check, so I wonder if oh, you I missed was... that. Anyway, okay. Too late now. We're second guessing as best we can. So rook a7, knight d4, that's a problem. The queen protects f7. No, black looks great here, knight d4. And it looks like white's about to queen, but the problem is white is not queenie before he's getting checkmate. Yep. So knight... Ooh, oh, he takes I... advantage of the knight guarding g7, which I didn't and... even anticipate. And the queen guards h5. That oh is my gosh, that is a crushing game. And, and right as we showed the prediction graph of where the stats suggest this match is going, the heads are moving further and further apart. At this well, the point. queen cannot get back to stop that pawn. So that's interesting. But knight takes d4. Black, or queen takes d4. a7 is under attack now. Yep. Very nice. Um, knight takes g3. You allow him to queen. Yeah. I... Yeah. Then knight back to f5. Okay, he's okay. going to go knight e2 check because king f1 was met by knight f4 and then mate. And yep, here comes so knight, knight f4, f4 now. threatening all kinds of mates. Queen d1 mate, game over. Our first, our first checkmate on the board and bid it. As I said, right as we said that those those uh, prediction graph was has been a snake flip-flopping itself as it slithers across the, the screen all day. These heads are moving further and further apart. And we only have 14 minutes left in the total game clock. Got to give a shout-out to the last several donations we've had that I've missed. The prize fund now at $210 donated by you, the fans, today. Dark Knight said, Grandmaster, I, he said Daniel, I think it was Narodisky, gave a very nice speech for you. I assume he thinks me and Chess Bay. And uh, he's very much appreciative, uh, helping someone so much. I meant what I said, though. Chess Bay is the best. Agreed. Dr. OMM, who I think donated $10, said, perfect show. Thank you so much. And uh, Dark Knight Chess Bra says, welcome back to Twitch. Please don't leave again. Oh, Chess Bay donated, saying, Dark Knight Chess Bra, welcome back to Twitch. Please don't leave again. So we're, I, I, I'm glad you guys know each other. I didn't know, but thanks for being here, Dark Knight. Thanks to everyone who's here. We're finally seeing someone start to pull away, and now I'm, now I'm wanting the old days, Robert. I'm rooting for Zabin to strike back and win. Yeah, and he really needs this one. He's got what looks like a pretty nice setup. He's... Um, his bishop on d6 aims at the king side, but the problem is white's too quick. Knight takes d6 and queen takes b7 here. There's no real attack. So you, you have what seems, what appears to be uh, an attractive setup for black, but what? The king is on h2. What, what's your next move? Okay, now the d6 pawn is weak. Take on d6. I mean, yep. just pieces are falling very quickly. Yeah, I think uh, Tigron's prediction in the chess TV chat 
a slight um a slight tilt maybe for Zavin. I think Vidit is was the underrated or maybe underappreciated bullet player, but I, I do agree that probably this isn't Zavin's best bullet performance either. So Yeah, and, and Tigran did say that Zavin has been playing a lot of bullet recently and but most of it was been on Lee Chess. So it just you know we haven't noticed it because it wasn't on the server. But okay, he's good to know he did come in quite prepared. Yeah, that he prepared, yeah. And you know, he's very familiar to everybody from his title to oh, Knight C6. Knight C6. There it is. Ooh. The first blunder by Vidit in a long time. Yep, so Although, look in it's, Ooh, oh. sack the queen back. I love rook that. There's rook takes D5. He could have yep. played it even last move. The but okay. There's a threat on E7. So what's the deal here? White has a rook, pawn, and bishop for the queen as Lasker compensation for all of those who may know the terminology. And the good news for white is that the king is very safe. There aren't that many pieces for black to actually attack the... Yeah, no, that was super heads-up thinking there to give up the... Uh, and normally, we, we would greatly favor the queen against the pieces Bishop, and time scrambles, but... Bishop d3 is going to be crushing at some point. Here comes e4. Uh -oh. Rook a6. Look at the pieces just coordinate so well. Rook d6, making sure everybody's guarded. Now you can play bishop c3. Everybody guards each other. Karpovian yep. chess. Knight e4, knight d6, I'm guessing, is coming, because if you trade, I get the d-pawn. Yep, he goes for it. I like it. Okay. Not the worst practical decision. Bishop b4 would have been met by queen f4 check, winning the beast. Knight b4, knight b5. Now you can just play rook f2. Still, a lot of, a lot of pressure being brought here. Forcing Vidit to find all the right coordinating moves, which is why it's often easier to play with the queen. But Vidit is doing doing the job here. I mean, this has been as good of a of a pieces versus queen battle as we've seen in this format in a long time. Yep. Just coordinated just super effectively. Bishop about four. I mean, look okay. at this. Everybody guards each other. And uh, he's just repeating where it makes sense hey, to do so. He... Oh, he blunders the bishop. No, he doesn't. Wow. Is he allowing this? Yeah, oh, he rookie did one comes. Rookie one, okay. Oh, that was clever. Wow. Did he calculate that the whole time? I think Black misplayed it by putting the queen on the e-file, but still, but that still, was... still, that very... was a filthy... Yeah, I mean, uh, shout out to Amon Hamilton, the legendary chess bra, KNVB, in the, uh, in the Twitch chat. So the way, coordinated, the way he coordinated his four pieces under time pressure, filthy. It, it really is, because especially coming from one of the better bullet players, I think, on the planet, Amon... He, uh, I mean, coordinating pieces like that is like just so tricky. I think the increment changes it, makes it a little bit easier. But, but still, that was that was super impressive technique and heads up play to sack the queen when he did. Yeah, that that was awesome. I mean, Vidit has just been shown time. Okay, that position was at that point was already very good for him. But he's shown time and time again that when he has a spatial advantage, when he has um, a weakness in his opponent's position, that he can start. Uh, attacking, yep. he's showing great strength in those type of structures. I, so. I have to say, like, looking at Vidit's confidence now, seeing his performance in Bullet, and looking back at the match where he did take those draws and just didn't want a time scramble, I can't wait to ask him the question if, like, his whole, if he just thought he was the better Bullet player and that's what he was going to shoot for. I, I don't, I mean, I'm just, it just seems like too weird that he didn't push on several times that he could have or maybe should have in Blitz, but in hindsight, maybe he made the right practical decision for his match strategy. Yeah, he's been impressing us, that's for sure. And um, so I just checked to see how Roger Federer was doing, and he's uh, now 2-2 two -two in the first um, set. So in this position, well, Vidit has the pawn on b3 to capture. He is also up a piece. So, you know, Zavin sacrificed that piece on the f5 square. It's not really working out for him. It's sort of desperation at this point because um, he's down four games of the match. Draws don't help. There are eight minutes left. So actually... If uh, or a little over eight minutes, but if yeah. Vidit just wants to let the time run out and just you know play quick moves and keep on just sustaining the position and make sure that the games last a while, he could probably get pretty close to running the clock out already at this point. Yeah. So no, it's it's getting in the mathematical territory where if you're Zavin, it's it's time to make a run. Yeah, you need to win this game. That's for sure. I don't know how you're gonna win the game, but you need to. Right. Rookie. Rookie six here, or bishop e six. Yep. And this is just it. Queen h five. There it is. But still, there's just uh, 
Bishop d5 would have won the knight on f3 with mating attack. But that it's in control regardless. I mean, this is yeah, he's this cool. is tough. It looks like we're about to get to a five-game lead and shocking myself given that this was the first ever... Whoa! Oh, never mind. I thought the Rooks was already on the seventh rank. I thought I was already seeing a, <laughs> a mate. That's a... Uh, that's called a, a, a premature... As, as we as we like to say in chess, when you get a little too excited about an attack before you should, it's called pre premature attackulation. <laughs> you're welcome. Oh, you, you're ridiculous. I've never heard you use that one before, so I am kind of proud of you, but that's, <laughs> that's um, ridiculous. Uh, anyway, but uh, regardless of my premature feelings about that attack, what I was going to say is, you know, this is the match that we, oh, wow, what a nice finish. Oh, brings it down, brings down the hammer brings down the hammer, and Vidit Gujarathi is going to be moving on to the second round, everybody. I'm ready to call it. How shocking is this? This was the first ever match we moved in to the final portion with a tie, Robert, and it's going to end up being more lopsided than the final of the MBL versus Dominguez Perez, potentially. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we were just we were praising these players as getting into a, a real battle here, but it yep. just seems like Vidit's too strong in the, in the bullet. Yeah. I love Very chess based comment. Vidit, fun fact, Vidit is playing from a Nordstrom's changing room, dressing room. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know what you guys are talking about, that that's uncalled for. I'm talking about an attack that doesn't work and, you know, came prematurely. It's not a big deal. So if you if you think that means something else, that's kind of a you problem. So, um, all right. Vidit has been playing like a monster completely obliterating the stats by the way as far as what was predicted by these players in this format yep destroying uh, destroying the stats and right now okay another game another advantage for vidit okay i mean it's not well the king on f7 no i'm good oh i love i love that image of the protesting all-star game yep. all-star match that that Graphic is great. We yeah, these give. two will have to kiss and make up, make up after the match because they're on teams. They're on, they're on the same team coming up. So, yep. And you know that is a, a great image. But in this, you know, what's not a great image is the scoreboard for Zavin. And okay, wait, knight d six. No, it doesn't quite work out. I was trying to go knight d six check. Rook takes bishop takes rook takes rook c five at the end. But then there's king e six. So okay, yep. he's just going. Oh, but now rook c5, of course. Now it go rook c5. So rook c7 check, the kick the king back, rook c5. So he had that the previous move as well. And I was somehow, trying to make it. No, I know, but somehow Vid is going to get a win again, and Zavin shakes his head. And I think this is an interesting and I think insightful comment from Diamond member Zygamorph. He says this match shows how much psychology means. I agree with him, especially in this format, that once you run out of faith and you lose your confidence, it's just downhill when you don't have the time to kind of recover and, you know, wake yourself up. So I, I agree that this... Match seems to have gotten out of control very quickly, right? Snowballing for Zavin right now. Yep. And thanks to Drag Shoot 86 for the uh, cheers there. That was that was good. But um, Zavin is just on full tilt. I don't even want to call it tilt. I think Vid is just playing better. Um, you know, yep. Tilt usually kind of implies that you, yeah, I don't know. Well, tilt implies you're beating yourself, but I think when you've lost this many games in a row, it's fair for us to say that there's a tilt going on here as well, because this is just not what you expected um, to happen here. And with three minutes and 45 seconds left, we have a six-game lead in a match that was tied like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> like, it's just bananas, right? 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I don't really want to see Artok after this, because I feel like he'll be very sad. Yeah, no one likes a sad Artok. <laughs> no, but we've seen so many knights on H2, right? This has been knight F3, knight H2, this kind of combination, which does make some sense, but okay, well, the E4 pawn just went, went away, so that's not ideal. But in general, I, maybe Zavin needed to switch up his openings more. Uh, we can probably well, I mean, ask. Georg, uh, you know, gave his insightful viewpoint earlier, right, that Zavin's issues are in the opening stage, and, and the truth is, it maybe could have been worse. I mean, he's been worse in most of the middle games. So, yeah, that's true. And here, the bishop run at four threads the d6 square, and that's actually very annoying to deal with right now because bishop d6, queen d7, knight b6 is queen d8, of course, but not looking great. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, at the very least, okay, now knight d5, you lose the e4 pawn, but you are able to trade off those bishops. Looks great for white. White's rooks are yeah. perfect. Place. Knight g4. Zavin's in, in position to get one here. So knight d6 now, probably. Yep, there it is. Pawn h4. Okay, pawn c4. F5. Oh, I'm so confused. F5 looked like an idea. Oh, the queen e5 check. Never mind. So what's, what's happening? How black is out of this? Wiggled his way out. If rook, I say if rook e1, this bishop takes h3. Bishop h3, I guess there's knight e8 check. So, but bishop h3 looked interesting. So now knight e4, take bishop h3 again. This looks like it could be headed for one of those long grinded out end games, which potentially means this could be the last match. Sorry, the last game in the match. Yeah, there's they're what under two minutes left, so and they both have thirty five plus seconds. Yeah, this could this could end us here, end up the, being in the final game. And I really feel like Vidit deserved this. Um, you know, we'll we'll talk to the players after, but Vidit, his play felt very strong throughout. Um, blew, blew some opportunities. We got to talk about Zavin about blundering that rook though. Yeah, no, that was a. Uh... That was a huge turning point. Huge moment. Somehow Vidit is in control again here. Um, One minute left means if Vidit wants this to be the last game, he can ensure it to be so. Yep. Yeah. So here... Well, black is up two pawns, one on each side of the board. The queen's side pawns can't move. The bishop on c8 ties them down, but the king can run from to f6 to e7 to d8. And in fact, that bishop on c8 is about to be trapped. So I don't know about g5, but I thought he would just go king e7 and move the, the king around. Okay. Hmm. So let's see. King e7. Bishop c8, king d8, bishop f5, king c7, and let's go b6. And bishop c4 always helps black keep that f7 pawn. Yep. Definitely here, Yavahan, 1985. Just want you to know you're heard. And uh, mm -hmm. it's not something that chess.com really thought a lot about, giving opportunities for members to, to donate or do things. Focused on making our tools what they can be for... for for people to subscribe, but I hear you, and uh, definitely something we'll work on and consider. The match is over. We now move on to the interview portion where uh, both of the players should be joining us right now. So we go ahead and unmute them and, and welcome Mr. Gujarati and Andreasian. And uh, let me know if you guys can hear us. Are you there? Z Zavin and Vidit, are you there? Thumbs up, yes? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know, I, I know the final score doesn't doesn't reflect it, but the truth is this was one of the, the closest, most back-and-forth matches we've ever had the privilege of being a part of. So on behalf of me and Robert, Robert, thank you both. It was awesome. And uh, Zavin, I know it, it got away from you there. Where do you feel like the turning point was? Did, did you have a trouble letting go of games, like, like the game where you blundered the Rook and the Opsco Bishop ending, or was it just that once you lost a few games, it was just hard to recover emotionally? We just, uh, after Rook 8 is okay. And then, okay, okay, I just missed the pawn on D3. This was the, I think, uh, most important moment when I played just Queen D1. Okay, uh -huh. just I can play so many move, okay, it's, I think it's uh, some uh, some position where you can play. It. So okay, if when I lost this game, okay, after it was not so easy, and I couldn't get some better positions from opening. So this was the problem. Right. Yeah. I couldn't get my positions. Yeah. Zavin, that was one of my questions actually. You repeated a lot of the same openings, but it felt like Vidit, especially when you were white, that Vidit was getting good position with the black pieces. Did you think about changing your openings, or was this part of your match strategy? Usually, okay, I'm playing the same opening, just uh, I don't know what, uh, what was wrong with me, just uh, I know the positions very well and uh, have a lot of experience, so I was 
uh, trying to play the positions of what I know better, just ideas or something. Right. Well, just I think this it was, uh, just doesn't work. So, what, what is your what 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 does that look like as far as your overall approach to the game? I, I think this could be seen as a compliment that um, uh, Grandmaster uh, Georg Meyer was in the chat and said that he thought that if your openings were stronger, that you would be a much higher rated player given the other aspects of your game. Um, so, what is your approach to the opening, and is it something that you know you uh, you feel like is, is normally okay in rapid and blitz when you're playing a few hours, but in a match format where someone can really challenge you as the same game over and over, it becomes a little more difficult. And that, how do you how do you think about that as far as your openings go? Yes, yeah, sure. But uh, the problem was uh, I never had the experience to play uh, with a strong opponent uh, so long time. I mean, this is three hours. I mean, it's uh, not so easy. Right. Okay, I thought the problem was, uh, would be in a 5 plus 1. This was just uh, what I was uh, thinking. But, okay, surprisingly for me, uh, I won that much. Okay, but uh, then, I don't know. That I think the first uh, half I was playing not bad, but then later, I don't know, just something uh, just something was gone wrong. And right. Well, over to you then, Vidit, to talk about the match strategy. One of the things that we were potentially critical of you, especially when the match was closer, was that it seemed like there were several games where you maybe had the opportunity to keep pushing for a win, but you chose to repeat moves and head head into a draw. Was was it part of your match strategy to get to the bullet? Did you feel like the bullet portion was where you spent most of your time preparing this week? We saw you played a lot of bullet games. Or, <laughs> or was it unintentional that, that you were maybe missing some opportunities under time pressure? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest problem when I repeated was uh, I was li very low on time and somehow in 3 plus 1, I was very slow. Uh, that was the main problem. Uh, I, I got decent positions, but I lost some of the games which I should not have lost. So, and also initially uh, in the first two games, I lost internet. So I was like really trying to compose myself and, you know, somehow. So once it got stable and once, actually I played a lot of bullet games uh, in 1 plus 1. So that's why it was easier for me to play. Makes sense. So, so it wasn't part of your match strategy to get to bullet and just be okay with the draw. You just weren't comfortable under time pressure. Yeah, yeah. When uh, when I saw like I have ten seconds and I didn't see a clear way, and I thought, okay, it's wise to repeat and not to you know lose one point unnecessarily. Yeah, and Vidit, I have a question for you. You started down two games to zero. How did you keep your composure and come back with two very quick wins after that? Yeah, I, I had actually. Uh, I didn't. I was not hoping for this to happen, but uh, I prepared for this like mentally. Like uh, I thought, once I lose a game, I'll just take some pause, just try to compose myself. Even if I go down like thirty seconds, one minute, it's fine. I just wanted to, you know, mentally be stable, and luckily it worked out. I mean, it's it's honestly very important, and I think we've Robert and I have have commentated on matches over the last few years where similar things have happened to players, and maybe they don't handle the. Uh, the blow that is your internet failing as as well. So kudos to you for for pulling yourself together, um, and uh, and kind of mentally coming back. Uh, Thank you, Zavin. You um. You you despite despite the rook wonder the the game was the match was so back and forth. Uh, did the did everything slide away from you just when you, like you said when you lost that d three pawn or in hindsight how would you have handled the bullet differently to maybe rebound and not not let like like Vidit was saying not let the mental aspect of losing a couple bad games get to you? Okay, just uh, I played the before this a uh, lot of bullet games, but not in a chess com. Maybe right. this, I, just, I didn't want to show my openings, uh, so I I was trying to play in other websites. So, but there is some problem in uh, there is uh, other uh, some options, you know there when you are playing and maybe this um, just have uh, because of this I had some problems in playing a bullet because I played Makes sense. In, uh, yeah okay this was the problem just next time I have to play in the same way uh, in the same place where I have to play right well um, now you guys that you finish this match and and Vidit will be moving on you will you will be coming together as as teammates for the uh, pro chess league all-star game on Saturday uh, talk a little bit about your experience in the Pro Chess League, Zavin. Obviously, you're you're kind of the hero of our of our first ever championship with your with your uh, with your fist pump picture. But uh, now you'll be on Vidit's team. Uh, you guys want to make any predictions that you'll be able to uh, to take home the gold for the Eastern Division? Okay, I think we will play. Uh, we will try to play our best play. So I think we we have to prepare because I saw the other teams are uh, very strong. 
a lot of strong players uh, are playing and we have to prepare a good uh, because it's a uh, 15 plus two second yeah like uh before we was playing honestly i think i should know that i don't i don't know if it's 10 2 or 15 2 it's one of those time uh, controls um uh, greg, okay. greg shahadi runs that i just show up so okay okay so i think we, we will prepare some armenian indian openings for other people good <laughs> good, good idea um well, uh, we brought I brought my Armenia Eagles mug. I don't know if I showed you that. Um, and uh, but Vidit, congratulations! Obviously, uh, you will you will be moving on um, into uh, into the next round. Of course, if we bring up the the bracket right now, you can see exactly what we're talking about. Taking on Grandmaster Wesley So, not gonna be not gonna be so easy. Not that this match was easy at all, but it's not going to be easy at all, right? Going up against Wesley. Um, what are your thoughts and what you need to do against So to, uh, to to get a victory in that match? Definitely, I need to play more uh, games in 5 plus 1 and 3 plus 1 because I think in this match, uh, in this time controls, uh, Zavin had the initiative and somehow he played uh, much, much stronger than me uh, and I was not playing well, I think. So yeah. I have to work on those things uh, for the match against So because he's of course one of the strongest players. But I think if I practice well, if I get into good rhythm, uh, like in like how I got in Bullet, uh, I think I, I can give a tough fight. Hopefully, it'll be close. Okay. Well, obviously, we wish you luck in that match, and of course, we don't have exact dates set yet for the second round, but um, we. Um, Thank you both again. It was it was a it was a ton a ton of fun, lots of back and forth. Just so you know, this was the first time in Speechless Championship history that a match was actually tied, headed into the bullet portion. So you guys made history today. You both did, and we actually had the highest amount of prizes donated by the Twitch fans. So an extra, I think, nearly two hundred and thirty dollars donated by the fans for you guys to put some extra cash in your pocket, right? Thanks. So that's Thanks cool. To all the fans, right? Uh, nice to see such support. And uh, and we thank you both. So um, we'll let you go now. We know it's late where you are, Robert. Unless you have any other questions, I think we can let our heroes off the hook here. No, definitely. I and mean, with the donations, you got to give a shout out to the fans. And we also had a, a coworker of Vidits in the chat, so that was really nice to see as well. And a lot of support for Zavin from uh, Tigran Petrosian as well as some other Armenian players. So you know, thanks for everyone for tuning in. It was a great match, Danny. And that's all I got. Yep. Yeah, and thank you to uh, all the mods, everyone who's who's here and helps make these shows possible, the staff behind the scenes, appreciate it. And uh, we're going to let everybody go now, and uh, peace out.